Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday, hump day. Had to check to make sure that mics were on. That's always embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, it happens. What's going on on this beautiful Wednesday evening? I hope that everything is going good for you all. I hope you are all nourished and strengthened by the grid. All that jazz. Yes. We have quite the program for you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the program? Oh, God. It's like the most unhinged shit that we've ever, like, talked about. Well, the no. bar is rather high. I will say that. But, I was going to um, say. It is pretty up there with unhinged, like, what the hell? What are we even doing? So, Yeah. How's it going? It's uh, officially four panel death metal print long sleeve season. And even though it was 80 fucking degrees today, I'm pushing through. I'm pushing through, you know. Got to be dedicated. Let me pull up chat here because I'm, <coughs> I'm blind to what you guys are saying. Let's see here. I want to see what you beautiful people have to talk to. Shout out to our patrons. Uh, who are among you and are unidentifiable against the crowd, but they are there. They're silently watching, and we love them. And shout out also to the YouTube members who are identified in the chat with their colorful names and the little badges next to them. We appreciate all you. You all keep us afloat and keep us going, and we appreciate it. Let's see what you guys have to say. Let me pull this up, make it bigger. What are some good things happening in everybody's life? Yeah, long sleeve band shirt weather. Straight up. Um, crew necks to hoodies. All very important. Of course, nothing beats the four panel death metal long sleeve tee in my opinion, but that's just me. Real talk. Have you also liked death metal? Seems like Mormonism uh, wouldn't like it. No, they don't. I was a black sheep in my family for that. Um, I kind of came up through the ranks, so to speak. My parents were really big into alternative and my mom especially was really uh, a hair metal kid at heart. So uh, that's kind of my entry Caroline. point, and I just kind of moved into core and all that shit. And welcome, Caroline. Caroline. Um, regular Caroline, but now member Caroline. Shout out, welcome. Appreciate, appreciate. K M turned the lovely thirty nine this past Saturday. Happy birthday! Amazing. And Julia turned 26. Jordan's oh. also 26. Happy birthday, Julia. Yes, Caroline is back, baby. Not a dumb question. People get it wrong all the time, so we always appreciate those who ask. I'm Jordan. Let's Oh, oh let's do our little thing. It's your favorite apostates. I'm McKay. And I'm Jordan. Here you go. <laughs> if you watch our regular episodes, then... Um, we spell it out for you at the beginning of everyone, but but if you've not, seen our lives, usually yeah, we don't. We're pretty we scatterbrained. Doing that anyway. Love is a four letter letter word. Welcome to the terrestrial kingdom. What's up? Working on my master's thesis. Whew! Bless you. Finishing grad school was the best thing I ever did. Um, Olivia's marking first year college essays. Shout out. Sounds like Olivia is a professor? international professor. So shout out. Enjoying this glorious moment of silence while my husband gives my one and three year old ready for bed. Oh, the three. Year, I'm actually kind of, this is for the first time in a while. I'm actually a little worried that we're going to get I'm going to get interrupted because kazoo like if you're new here 20 minutes ago, we call our child kazoo yeah. 20 minutes ago. 
um, was uh, yelling for me. And then I go in there and he's like, I want to sing the duck song. If you watch Miss Rachel, you know what I'm talking about with the duck song. So I, I sang the first of five verses, right? And then I'm like, okay, you can just sing it to yourself and you can lay back down. And then he goes, um, I'm done sleeping. I was like, uh, <laughs> you have been laying there for 30 minutes, buddy. <laughs> the sun hasn't even set all the way. I'm done with sleeping. And meanwhile, I'm like, oh my God, I need one more minute of sleep. <laughs> I let Jordan snooze while I, oh, this isn't the got any grapes uh, ducks. This is the five little ducks went out one day. That one. I don't know if it has like a real thing. So yeah, hopefully he stays in bed. Yes, uh, Kazoo is not his legal name. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, right. So. Thank you for the love on my beanie. Oh, I forgot to tell you. He picked up, I didn't even say anything. He had dumped out all his toys in the room and he picked them up. Never, ha has never happened before. And I, I was like. Is that why it's clean upstairs? <laughs> well, <laughs> Not that. It, the oh. ones in his room. I oh. cleaned up the, okay. I was like, the living wow, room. <laughs> impressive. <laughs> oh, yeah. We didn't go that hard. Don't worry. It was just the stuff that we were doing. I'm all done sleeping. I'm <laughs> all awake forever. <laughs> <laughs> Usually he it. likes sleep. If he's tired enough, he'll be like, I'm ready to sleep. I can go sleepy now. That's yeah. So cute. Shout out. He's a super good sleeper, so I really never have any... Uh, any complaints after him being a baby baby he was always knock on wood he's always been a good sleeper <laughs> yeah so yeah my five month old loves when my husband and i put on rock music unfortunately when i drive in the car he has never cared whenever i play my music which is like the biggest disappointment for me but hey i know that he's his own person he has his own likes and dislikes whatever I'm on the books anyway lately, so. Oh, also, yesterday was one month since I had signed up for Audible. So in that time, I've read three and a half books because of Jordan. So shout out. Yeah, shout out is right. Yeah, I'm over halfway through A Court of Wings and Ruin. And it's it's cooking, bro. It's cooking. It's heating up. It's cooking. Okay, shall we talk about what we're doing today? Uh, yeah. Let me make sure. Oh, yeah, we're still on here. Okay. Would you like to introduce our topic today? Um, yeah. How did how did this even come up? This came up because somebody shared a post of John's cringy painting of Tim Ballard on Instagram. And I was like, oh, God, we need to cover this. And that was just this morning. Julia, I'm going to set a reminder in my phone right now to, I think you can get a P.O. box online, can't you? I think we did that last time. I think we did that last time. I need. I really things. need to set it up so bad, so sorry. Um, jog my mind what you were saying again. A reminder. I was focusing um, on the It's because somebody <laughs> posted box. the Tim Ballard one on Instagram. Oh, so I saw it okay. And said, oh, we need to cover this. Well, and very recently, White Jesus, I can't, was it when we were talking to Jen and James? I don't know. It might have been them. I feel like it was. Or it might have been Nat Natalie. I can't remember. But um, I had mentioned that there's like no. Oh, yeah. It was Jen and James because I was talking about. Yeah. Um, I was talking about how basically there's like no mormon art that's like objectively good <laughs> and all the good stuff is not popular so yes mckay how'd you like that <laughs> court of mist and fury spines uh i had to turn it off because i was in the car <laughs> with kazoo i was like oh my god so it's anyway true. Um, yeah, so basically there's no Mormon, like exclusively good 
objectively good Mormon art. Um, and the stuff that is good, that's popular is f Jesus Christ. And so we wanted to talk about John McNaughton because he is very popular, not any, not only in Mormon circles, but also in, um, Pony. the broader right wing reactionary circles. So you guys' favorite. Yeah. Lily Shambliss. Welcome to the outer darkness. Come here. Awesome. Hold on. Let me get baloney. Hop little bunnies. <laughs> hop, hop, hop. Yes, that. He goes hard for that song. Oh. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped baloney. <laughs> he must have stood on the keyboard when I when I dropped him. <laughs> Great stream, everybody. <laughs> oh, no. You didn't hear any of that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Baloney, come here. Psst, 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 psst. Come here, baby. Come here. I don't know if I can get him back on my lap now that I accidentally almost dropped him on his head. So come maybe Jordan can. Sorry. I don't even remember what I was saying. <laughs> Oh, also, somebody was like, not McKay listening to a court of mist and fury with kazoo. Hey, if it's getting too spicy, I turn it off. Don't worry. I I could not ever. That I just. No. Hey, Luckily, yeah. most times he's not he's not even listening because he's concentrated on <laughs> getting me to my destination. He's the navigator. Frankie B with the five gifted memberships. Thank you, Frankie B. And welcome to all the homies, Tinkerbell or Tinkerbell Bell, nineteen eighty, Mommy of Kittens, Brooke, Ashton C, and Shay, all gifted memberships. Welcome everybody. Hell yeah, we love it. So hopefully Baloney can. It's spelled however you want to spell Baloney. Hopefully he can. Uh, we spell it B O L O G N A. Yeah, like Oscar Mayer. Um, there oh, we go. There we go. He loves Jordan again. I just set myself back about a month of uh, affection. And Katie celebrating three months terrestri or terrestrial kingdom. Curious what average Mormies think of unions. Uh, it is the the regular right wing view of uh, unions are bad, and that's about the extent of it. Okay. Okay, we have to get on with it. Jordan does like spice in her books. PowerPoint. <laughs> We're ready for this PowerPoint. Hold on, let me pull this up. Bu, bu, bu. And the present mode. I have a hair in the little laser port of my mouse, so my <sighs> is going kind of slow. B O L O G N A. Here we go, baby. I just want everybody to appreciate how fucking look at this beautiful. My PowerPoint is beautiful. These cute PowerPoints are brought to you by all of you who told me to start doing my PowerPoints in Canva because they're cuter. And you were correct. And this correct. is not a, like, awful, godforsaken child abuse topic. And so PowerPoint. I can actually use a... PowerPoint. PowerPoint. I can actually use a <laughs> format that is, like, cute and fun and not, like, horrifying. Um, <laughs> uh, like, sanitized and... Yeah, trying to be... Yeah. Yeah. So... Boring. An insane art presentation for everyone in outer darkness. That is all of you. <laughs> Bless your hearts. And that's why we're in outer space here. I like the subtitle. Thank you. We love it. Okay, next slide. Aesthetic PowerPoint era, baby. Thank you, everyone, for your love for my PowerPoint. All right, here we go. Would you like to read about John McCann? This, everybody... Hold on, what side am I on? This is John McNaughton. 
John McNaughton is America's foremost conservative artist this and outspoken. This is from his website. Oh, okay. An outspoken critic of the left. McNaughton strives to paint images that express his ideas and beliefs. Hated and loved for his controversial work, viewers from around the globe write about the unique perspective of these paintings that seem to tap into the heart of American patriotism. The artist of the MAGA, MAGA movement, said Steve Bannon, who was uh, formerly of the Trump campaign. What was his uh, duty in that? Scamming? I don't know. Uh, you can find his art at johnmcnaughton.com, which is where we will be viewing these images, unfortunately. Just to he avoid looks like he'd call me a slur, Julia. Uh, he looks oh. like he would? No, he looks like he definitely would. John needs to McNaught. I agree. So he's a Jesus-hugging Trump type. He's a No, he's a, a Trump-hugging Jesus type, I think. Yes, and you will find I'm out guessing. why in a minute. Um. Yeah. So next slide. <laughs> Advisor, scammer. Yeah, that's uh, that's Steve Bannon. I see uh, on trial right a now. Patriotic spoon. I actually don't Steve know. Steve Bannon. Can't remember. Anyway, let's not find his art. Let's not find his art. John and Mormonism. Number one, John. Uh, Mormon level up. John studied at BYU. Studied art at BYU. Oh, art. Is that what he graduated with, or did he graduate at all? It didn't say. He just said he studied art at BYU. Okay. So he didn't graduate from BYU. We don't know. <laughs> we don't sounds know. Sounds like. Uh, mission Served a mission in Japan. Did it Indeed. say particularly which? I guess it was probably just one mission at that time because. It was a minute ago. Yeah. It was a minute ago. And married. Married and from P Provo, Utah. So he's like Mormon in his veins. He You. You cut him open and he's like bleeding baptismal font water. I don't know. <laughs> That's this okay. guy, John John McNaughton, baby. We love this. I love these uh, level ups. Thank you. Um, some people in the D and D realm would probably call that. Uh, he would call that a buff, but a lot of people would call that <laughs> a deep buff. <laughs> All right, let's look at some art, some fart. Oh man. So here's the thing: before a McKay clicks on this. For copyright reasons, I can't just, like, screenshot the art and put it in the PowerPoint. So, we he has all of his art listed on his website, so you can buy it. So, we're going to do... Oh, we're looking at the... Pr we're shopping for prints. We're shopping for prints, basically, okay. is what we're doing. So, McKay's going to click the links, which I have on each of these, and pull them up. And the other thing he does is he includes descriptions of the art also on the website which is important when making a decision about what art you're going to buy so that's also why i linked the website so. there you go so let's go on let's let's use let's go shopping for some art guys let's go shopping for some art all right oh my this is not in. the one that i thought it was can we get it oh there we go do you need to share your screen or is it already up there sweet jesus no it is already up there so, like we've mentioned before, Mormons have, like, massive hard-ons for the Founding Fathers. Like, it's basically unsettling. I don't understand. They're in canon Mormon scripture, basically. Yep. Um, Doctrine and Covenants, specifically. Uh, no, in the Book of Mormon. In the Book of Mormon? Yep. Well, you're thinking Christopher Columbus. I'm um, thinking Washington. Oh, yeah. There's that. Christopher Columbus. Yes, this is. <laughs> let me let me pull up this passage real quick. Yes, you guys. This is so funny. These are the Mormon angels with. Yeah. With flaming swords. I'm imagining what he was going for. Right. Well, there are swords. This is like a Halloween image. Here we go. Let me let me pull up this shit for y'all. It's in First Nephi. Yes. So this is a Mormons. Okay. Let me let me just get something straight here, real quick, right? Mormons are are just vehemently um, of the belief that every single event, essentially leading up unto from Jesus's death up until the founding or what they would call the refounding of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints through Joseph Smith. 
every event was leading up to that. So all the thing, all the dominoes had to fall, fall into place, right? So um, this is coming from a vision that Nephi has in First Nephi chapter 13. What verse is this? Hold on. Verse 12. Let me bring it over here real quick. And I'll show you guys. Sorry, I'm running two different browsers at the same time. <laughs> this is my... Uh... All right, so First Nephi chapter 13 in the Book of Mormon, penned by Joseph Smith. And it says, And I looked and beheld a man among the Gentiles who was separated from the seed of my brethren by many waters the Atlantic Ocean, and I beheld the Spirit of God that came down and wrought upon the man, and he went forth upon the many waters, even unto the seed of my brethren, who were in the promised land. So this is talking about Christopher Columbus, that God inspired Christopher Columbus to go to the new world, new world, and to visit the people in the promised land who were the brothers of Nephi, a.k.a the descendants of those brothers known as the Lamanites. So they believe that, like, it is scripture in Mormonism. It is fucking doctrine and that Christopher Columbus was inspired by God to come to the new world, and then everything thereafter was essentially laying the groundwork so that the church could exist in today. Exactly. And Doctrine and Covenants, which was also penned by Joseph Smith, has multiple references to... Mainly Joseph Smith, but yeah. The founding fathers, so George Washington specifically. Yeah. Um, and so, and there was, like, when I was growing up, from my understanding, I don't know, remember this is in DNC or not, my brain's, like, pushed that out because I don't want to think about it anymore, but, like, my understanding was all the founding fathers were baptized, like, as they do baptisms for the dead. And so all of them were, like, reclaimed by the church because they were baptized. Yep. There's a whole bunch of that. Let's see. Oh, this revelation was. Oh, here we go. I <laughs> I totally forgot about okay, this Okay, cool. Shit. This is exactly what this, I was talking this about. This is even better. Here you go. This isn't Joseph Smith. This is Wilford Woodruff. Wilford Woodruff. I'll, I'll have y'all know that this this link was already purple so Wilford Woodruff. <laughs> i knew this shit it just it goes you tend to just like block out some of the stuff that's just so fucking crazy so wilford was a prophet yeah he was um joseph smith and brigham young the third prophet <laughs> i had to sing the song to remember what number he was uh president wilford Wood woodruff spoke these words before i left saint george whoa southern saint george Near Ivan's, where Jude, Jody Hildebrand was arrested, but Indeed. that's not for today. We're not doing that. The spirits of the dead gathered around me, wanting to know why we did not redeem them. See baptism for the dead. Said they, you have had the use of the endowment house temple for a number of years, and yet nothing has been done for us. We laid the foundation of the government now you now enjoy, and we never apostatized from it. Cap. But we remained true to it, and we were faithful to God. These were the signers of the Declaration of Independence, and they waited on me for two days and two nights. I straightway went into the baptismal font and called upon Brother McAllister to baptize me for the signers of the Declaration of Independence and 50 other eminent men. These noble spirits came there, and with divine permission, evidence— that this is uh, that this work of salvation goes forward on both sides of the veil. At a later conference in April 19, or 1898, after he became president of the church, Wilford Woodruff uh, declared that those men who laid the foundation of this American government and signed the Declaration of Independence were the best spirits the God of heaven could find on the face of the earth. They were choice spirits and were inspired of the Lord. We honor those men today, and we are grateful beneficiaries of their noble work. So there you have it. These dudes, they were Mormons. They just didn't know it yet because it didn't exist. And then it also falls in line with the whole Mormon thing of, like, everything is divinely planned and 
Mormons invented fan fiction. Basically, <laughs> Straight yes. Up. So if you didn't know, the founding fathers asked to become Mormon after they were dead, and the Mormon prophets allowed it to happen and encouraged it, and they were all influenced by Mormon God. So there yeah. you go. They want the song. Yeah, the only smut they have in the Book of Mormon is fucking criminal kind of smut so which i don't remember this song so you're gonna have to do it. what song the prophet song oh my god well it's been amended now since i learned it in primary because there's been two prophets since then but <sighs> um let me think of how it goes i'm nervous <laughs> <laughs> hold on you don't have to sing it you can just say it no you have to sing it you can't just say it latter day prophets are number one Joseph Smith, then Brigham Young, John Taylor was third, we know, then Wilford Woodruff Lorenzo Snow, Joseph F. Smith, remember the F, Heber the J. Grant and, Grant and George Albert Smith, David O. McKay was followed by Joseph Fielding Smith. Um, and there's a couple I don't remember after that one. It's kind of... The rhythms and the <laughs> shit, the rhythm and and the the lyrics are really just kind of squished in there. But yeah, that's anyway. so you remember the order. Yeah, I hated the song, so I refused to learn a lot of them. I did obviously learn many of them. Uh, after Joseph Smith, Fielding Smith is Ezra. Uh, Spencer W. Kimball, Ezra Taft Benson, um, Howard W. Hunter, and then uh, Gordon B. Hinckley. And following that was not included in the song that I learned, um, but Thomas S. Monson and then Russell M. Nelson today. Indeed. Rusty Nelson. Anyway, is that a Christmas tune or a baseball tune? It's prob It could be a baseball tune. Um... Let's look up where the, the tune is. I'm sure the <laughs> the lyrics at the end are um are probably fucked up because that they probably put it in the kill the children's songbook probably in like the seventies and then they had to amend it like three different times for <laughs> when I learned it. Is it called Prophets? This is such a tangent, y'all. This is great, though. Dead air. <laughs> Sorry. I was pulling out. I was looking at what our mods were talking about. Um, all right. What are you doing? We got Sorry. derailed here. We, we got really derailed. Everybody asked me to sing that fucking song. I so. know. We had if to... it's anybody's fault... You only have yourselves to blame. Oh, my God. Okay, so go back to Washington. <laughs> okay, we're going back to Washington and John McNaughton. So Do we need to read the description here? Go down to the description, see if there's anything okay. interesting in there. $237. That's a pretty big. For a canvas. 16 by 20. Well, I guess. It's That's a decent size print. Bad. This fucking small print. <sighs> Okay, my mouth is dry. It's time for you to read. Okay. Um, let's see if there's anything interesting because many of us know the history of George Washington, but um, yeah. Um, oh, this is Valley Forge. It... Winter quarters near Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. The lack of supplies. For... Well, not everybody's from the United States. That's we true. have a uh, an international audience. Okay, would you like me to read up? Yeah, go ahead. In the fall of 1777, George Washington took his army and made winter quarters near Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. The lack of supplies, frigid cold, and rampant disease led to the death of an estimated 25% of Washington's soldiers that winter. In my painting, I chose to depict General Washington kneeling in fervent prayer for his army and the cause of freedom. Unbeknownst to him, large warrior angels stand behind him in the snow. A warrior to the <laughs> right holds the sword of pause. <laughs> the The operating term there being unbeknownst to him <laughs> meaning uh this shit is made the fuck up okay um, continue 
So a warrior to the right holds the sword of truth, his hand over his heart. A warrior to the left wields the sword of virtue, gesturing towards Washington. The strength of Washington and his army was not solely in their skills and weaponry, but in their faith, courage, and virtue as they stood strong in the face of tyranny. My heart rejoices in the story of Parrot Valley Forge. As we look to uncertain times ahead, let us remember to pray for God's blessing, wisdom, and strength in every battle that comes. Okay. Isn't it interesting that those uh, those angels didn't say, hey, maybe don't own people? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Are we good to move on? Yeah, go to the next one. Oh, no. Are they sending this shit in the chat? Yes. Did you include these ones? I didn't include that one, but I included. Oh, my God. We need to do that one. Yeah. Yeah. We can come back to that. That one we need to do. Okay. Moving on. Parting the veil. Colon. Is that a semicolon? No, that's a colon. The second coming. You already know this one's going to be a fucking banger. Oh, this one. I didn't know this was John McNaughton. This yes. one is. This is really. Big time. A really popular. Right here. There's a lot of unhinged. Um john art but i wanted to include some of the religious stuff this is one of the most popular um depictions of the second coming yeah this is big time popular Within after the mormonism um once this was painted it became one of the more popular ones but previously it was the um the arnold freiberg one okay um that paints jesus to look like him <laughs> so this is very interesting and know all the angels and white and Jesus and red space, Jesus space, Jesus. Um, and then somebody said, is that NFTs? Yes. You're John McNaughton has NFTs. McNifty. Oh my. I have to my. Oh, sweet Jesus. Okay. I'm going to save this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Unfortunately for everyone. This one starts at 340. So, John has interesting tastes. Okay, so scroll down. Wanted to see if there was anything in there. Um, do you want to read this one? Or do you want me to read yeah. One? All my life I've heard people talk about the second coming of Christ. When will it be? Exactly what will it be like? I'm just an artist. Of course. <laughs> I certainly don't know the answers to all these questions, but a couple of years ago, I had a vision in my mind where I could see Christ descending surrounded by numerous people. They were the righteous who had been caught up to meet him on that glorious day. Raptured, baby. Even though Mormons don't really believe in a rapture. Anyway, uh, the Savior was dressed in red as written in Revelation 19 verses 13 through 14 as he was clothed with a vesture dripped in blood and his name was called the word of God and the armies which are in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean. It was as if he spread his name and like parting heavenly clouds he made himself visible to the inhabitants of the earth all would see him and would witness his glory then every knee would bow and every tongue confess that jesus is the christ why is he dressed in red my brother in christ will you put some fucking quotation marks in here why was he dressed in red i believe it symbolizes the blood he spilt for each of each one of us that has ever lived he is the Redeemer. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the literal Messiah. Maybe he should be more careful if he's spilling blood everywhere. Yeah. Um, hello? Get the goddamn carpet cleaner out, Jesus, if you're going to be <laughs> spilling everywhere. <laughs> Jeez. Also, anyway, I was able to keep a straight Jesus face. Not peri his period in space. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I was able to keep a straight face with Tom and Baloney absolutely fucking fighting at my feet. Yeah. Look, look. You see that? That's cats left unsupervised in the middle of the night right there. Being crazy asses. Okay, yeah, let's go so on to the next fun. one. Yep. Space Jesus with this period. Got it. Shout out. We love a, a period having Jesus. Okay, so before you click on this one. The emperor has no clothes. Are we, we gonna, are we going to get uh, taken down for this? This is one of the most unhinged ones I've seen. But before you go back to our faces for a second. 
You can set yourself on fire. Is it on our faces? Is what? Um, oh, do you want to our faces? Let's go back to our faces real quick. So here's my message to you Boo! as we uh, enter this next era of the PowerPoint. Because part of We're what John. In a different era? We are. Shit. Part of we'll go back to the religious stuff, but part of what John is so famous for is because he's literally like the MAGA artist, right? So most of his paintings are political in nature, or have some sort of political message to them, and a ton of them are about Donald Trump. So <laughs> we will be seeing Donald all over the fucking place this evening. So I'm just warning you, if you knew if you're new here. You've probably picked up on it by now, but we are not conservative. We do not lean right. We are very much on the left side of things, and we... Hard line, buddy. We, Hard line. That's not our area. <laughs> we don't have a problem if whatever your political beliefs are exist where you exist, but just know You're that probably we are gonna get offended, and you probably <laughs> will not like it. If you are super conservative. So there's your warning. I'm telling you so you can get out now if you'd like. But. Because if you get all pissy in the in the chat and you start throwing a fit, you're probably just going to get muted. Or if I see it, I'll just be. Right. You. So like. Sorry. If that's not your vibe, that's not your vibe. Um, Ob so. Objectively, all of this is cringe. Like. If you're. If you don't see the cringe in this. It's bad. See, see yourself out. <laughs> so here is a more recent one that he's done called The Emperor Has No Clothes. Oh, my God. I'm going to piss myself. <laughs> Zoom in on it. <laughs> I was so stunned by this i did not even know what to do with this so confused also notably a little bit of a there are other foreign leaders in this photo you'll know vladimir putin yeah, on see. the right we'll just go through we got hillary clinton bill clinton we got anthony fauci xi jinping uh i can't remember her name she's a secretary of something everybody hates her because she's trans i don't know who the fuck that is uh general something then you got kamala harris and nancy pelosi and the former speaker person yeah former speaker of the house yeah person. jen saki i can't see who that is that kind of looks like beto o'rourke but I that is definitely not beto uh vladimir putin <laughs> and then obama <laughs> obama <laughs> oh is it prince andrew Oh, is it? Oh, Maybe. oh, if that that would make a lot of sense. He lists all the people below. No, okay, so and then obviously the shirtless. And then a random kid with like chocolate milk spilled down his shirt. Yeah, I can relate I to that. I, I don't understand. So this kind of looks down, like the back of the head of Beto O'Rourke. Kind of does. Beto. Go down to the description because it says Let's who everyone check is. Check it out. Uh, Anthony Fauci, Xi Jinping, Rachel Levine, General Milley. I don't even know who that is really. Joe, Kamala, Nancy, Jen, Hunter. Oh, it's oh, Hunter. Hunter. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. So then he wrote this poem. Oh, my God. He is multi-talented artist. And now he's writing poetry, apparently. So would you like me to read this poem to you guys? Only if you're going to de deliver it in the manner that only John McNaughton could have cooked up in his brain you i don't know, know if he i was can fucking do that cooking. but you know he was cooking okay so this Let's is called it. the emperor has no clothes he could never win the people's house and rule from the ivory tower but when the swindlers came to town they promised him the power oh good it rhymes we can weave for you a victory the means are now invisible because americans are not capable to explain the unexplainable what this is sounding like connections so they crafted them a president all protests were deflected. It was called an insurrection, and the emperor was selected. Then the leaders came to gather to hear the great one speak. He wore a crown of gold. His appearance was unique. What is that I think I hear from the lips of a little kid? He pointed to the emperor and shouted, that guy is naked. 
The people only whispered first, then all candidly exposed. The president is a fraud and the emperor has no clothes. <laughs> Oh my god. We love an A B C B rhyme scheme. <laughs> I have never read something so okay. unhinged. There's the little kid. The Emperor That guy's naked. This, what on earth is this? This is crazy. Can you imagine somebody I guarantee you there's at least one person that has paid two hundred thirty seven US dollars plus tax and shipping and handling for a framed print of this. And they invite people over to their house to look at it all the time. Yeah, or they have it in their office but during their Zoom meetings. Or here's some the thing, like though. That. Like, at the end of the day, you're the one with a half-nude photo of Joe <laughs> Biden in your house. So, like, what are we doing here? Like, you want to describe this photo, and it's like, oh, yeah, I keep an yeah, art you wanna photo of that? shirtless Joe Biden yeah, in what my do you office. Like, what? Th this is such an... This is one of those ones that you have to explain because it's ambiguous. You're like, oh, yeah, I love all of these people, and I am fantasizing constantly about a naked Joe Biden with a crown. Yeah, you guys, he had to <laughs> paint nipples on Joe Biden. <laughs> So I mean, who really is fixated on things here right now? Dude, look at look at the detail in these those nip knops. Look at those nip knops. Damn, Joe. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is just That's crazy, unbelievable. Bro. I get that off of my screen. I've never never in my life thought about Joe Biden shirtless and I was hoping not to see somebody uh portray that in a painting. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> okay, next slide. Obama Nation. This is Obama Nation. You can tell right off the bat he has strong feelings about Obama. Oh, fuck. I mean? like how... No, it did. I just... Oh, there we go. You have to click on the text. It's oh, not, okay. It, you can click... The, the hitbox is too small. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. So you H might have to zoom Christ. in on this one. I don't know if I can. Can we get a more detailed? Why is it? I don't know why there's two of them. I was confused. Oh, there you go. Oh, there we go. This is crazy. Yeah, there's like a million Holy things shit. going on in here. Not the least of which is like just not okay. And like 20 different shades of racism specifically. Um, but this is why John McNaughton is so unhinged because like, what the fuck is going on here? And like, we've got the plane headed into the building in the background, like the UN even. Are we, are we for real right now? And just, this is, this is like, this has so many Easter eggs in it. Like the teleprompter and Osama fucking... Osama bin Laden the poor guy was just trying to play some animal crossing on his fucking DS come on looks like the need work person I'm assuming is some immigration immigration crisis bullshit this kind of looks like I, I think this was painted painted ahead of its time this kind of looks like um, Glenn Beck. Oh, the wedding cake. You guys notice that's oh, a good one. Oh, the wedding cake. That actually happened here in Colorado. Oh, and where that one guy some denied dude eating a wedding cake. A gay couple a wedding cake, and it went all the way to the Supreme Court. I really have to think back onto this. Uh, is this a, a Muslim man burning the Holy Bible? Occupy Wall Street and who's the guy on the stretcher? It? What is the stretcher? it's like leaking black underneath it. Is that being it's supposed to be representative of Benghazi? Maybe? Oh, is Mitt next to the Christmas tree? I think he is. Mitt Romney. I think you are right. And then Gaddafi over here, Muammar Gaddafi. What is happening with the cop's hands? So he's holding a glass of beer. Oh, that's yeah, like. that's a beer mug for sure. So he's just he, he's had it. Guys, the cops are alcoholics and it's all Obama's fault, he's... I guess. <laughs> also, what's up with the cock on the podium? Like <laughs> Oh my 
my god. This is an Abe Lincoln photo. It's too much to take there. in, honestly. What's on the whiteboard? I can't even read it. This is like and then there's like a random head on the ground in front of the desk. Like what is that? Oh, that's a bust of something. The cop is getting sloshed. <laughs> <laughs> oh thanks obama all the cops are getting fucking so wasted. go down to the description okay. so you can yeah maybe we can glean some sort of uh okay i chose an Do you undis- want me to read this yeah go for it i chose to use an undisclosed studio so i could paint privately hey uh do you not own a home dumbass? red flag red flag <laughs> without interruption to focus on the task of embedding in a single painting all the subtle mindless radical and dangerous atrocities of the obama administration oh my God. <laughs> i'm just one person a citizen of this country using my first amendment <laughs> rights to speak out through my art this is my declaration that we have never had a president to do more harm to our country than Barack Obama. To those who scoff or wish to trivialize this painting, trivialize this painting, I challenge you. I dare I you. I dare you. Study the links of the various symbols and metaphors that you see. There are over 60. You're going to have to spell them the fuck out, buddy. 60 in the painting. No one, no person can analyze this image and learn about these facts and still in good conscience vote for Obama in 2012. I do not hate Obama. But I hate the fact that I had to paint this picture. Has the painting gone too far? I knew when I did this that most Obama supporters would reject what I have done. You don't say. But as a conservative, I'm fed up with the corruption in Washington and I'm sick of the political correctness that has derailed our country. (laughs) My art is an expression of the times in which I live and people will know how John McNaughton felt about being alive in America in 2012. Take the challenge. If you still choose Obama, congratulations. You're a part of the Obama nation. I like the circular link right here. Like what? We're on johnmcnaughton.com. <laughs> he links to johnmcnaughton.com. Oh, there's more. What do you hope to accomplish? Oh, God. Someone once said, there's nothing more irritating than being awakened. 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 Sir, awakened. From a sound sleep. I hope to wake up a few. If anyone is undecided about voting for Obama, please study the painting, take the challenge, share it with your friends, and help us to expose this man and vote him out of office. Are you doing this for the money? No. I mm. paint what is important to me, but I know there are many who feel the same as I do about Obama. I'm a professional artist. I make my living providing a service, and I get paid to do it. The vast majority of who view my work never pay a nickel. They pass it around on the internet with their friends or see it on someone's wall. This no is apostrophe. just propaganda. You want to read this one? <laughs> It seems funny that when a liberal artist paints a political motif, it is called artistic expression. I'm surprised he left out the quotes right there. But when a conservative does the same thing, critics call it propaganda. Double period with space in between. When I think of propaganda, I think of early 20th century war posters commissioned by the Nazis and communist regimes. It usually conveys a negative meaning. So I know when it, why my critics like to use it to describe me, but I am not the government. I am simply one individual, a citizen of this country, using my First Amendment rights to speak out through my art. I love how he's like, I'm not the government. This can't be propaganda because I'm not the government. Do you think this is art? What is art? Oh, don't get all weird on me now. <laughs> there are many certified art experts who would love to tell you the answer. Their opinions mean little to me because I only paint to satisfy my desire to share a message. For me, art has a way of communicating both thoughts and feelings that words fail to adequately express. Buddy went into the dictionary and pulled this and said that it was his own. I guarantee it. If my art causes another to think and to feel, it is a success. I use metaphor and symbol because it leaves more for the viewer to discover. But the fur, but for the few who choose to take the time to study, I have the interactive website where I meticulously explain my images. I paint realistically because it communicates to the broadest audience. I paint political and religious subjects because they are close to my heart. When whether someone from the history books could have painted it better means nothing to me. My art is an expression 
of the times in which I live and people will know how John McNaughton felt about being alive at this time in our history. Because that's Bro the question on everyone's invented minds. fucking metaphors and symbolism in art. Well, <laughs> how many times a day do I just sit around and think, how does John McNaughton feel about being alive at this oh, time in yeah. history? Like, that's something we all want to know. It was the least of my concerns <laughs> after the, like, the uh, oh my Biden nip knops. <laughs> the Biden nip knops. <laughs> Oh. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, Obamination. Thank you, Johnny, for that. The Forgotten Man. This oh, is one God. of John's most popular paintings, actually. Let's see it. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. So, again, we've got star of the show Obama again, because he just loves Obama. I don't understand what the, the scaling situation is on this website. If you X any... out of it and zoom in, will let you do it. Um, good question. Get off. I of think Obama's that was. Uh, sorry, o Obama. Hold the fuck. Oh, dude, I thought that was fucking no, Russell Brand for a part. second. Oh. I was like, oh my god, buddy, what are you doing? Go up. Uh, where are we? Where'd oh. it go? Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. I just can't move my cursor over it. <laughs> saying what are those <laughs> what are those you guys are so funny they are my crocs so obama is standing on an important document is that the declaration or the constitution probably i would assume so they're always like the constitution and then there's money on the floor on the ground oh yep and then all the presidents i can see ronald reagan back there oh yeah there's, these are the founding fathers like howard william taft or whatever the Abe fuck his Lincoln, name is. ronnie JFK, jfk george w fucking fdr even fdr wow um and yeah that's me on the, bench. on the bench it's mormon me I, i'm thinking back to the obama administration and uh, maybe it was joe the plumber or whatever it's just this forgotten man. whatever talking point they were using at the time they're yeah. forgetting the american people's needs also we're just it's just so funny like people are like no we're not racist or whatever just look the only black man in the photo and they're all like scoffing at him is <laughs> i mean <laughs> hello it's, what <laughs> it i feel like everything that he does is political wise is racist in some yes. way or another um yes okay so scroll An down to the bottom. crowd of white men and they're scoffing at barack obama yeah okay so scroll down to his description all right against the background of a darkening sky all the past presidents of the u.s gathered before the white house as if to commemorate some great event in the left hand corner of the painting sits a man that's not the corner that man <laughs> That's not a corner. That's literally not a corner. <laughs> that man with his head bowed appears distraught and hopeless as he contemplates his future. Some of the past presidents try to console him. When I'm having a bad day, where the fuck are the former American presidents yeah. helping me out? I really need some war criminals to come through. <laughs> and make and me feel better. Give, yeah. Give, give me a little pat on the back. Make me feel good about myself. Whoops. Some of the past presidents console him while looking in the direction of the modern presidents as if to say, what have you done? Many of these modern presidents seemingly oblivious to anything other than themselves appear to be congratulating each other on their great accomplishments. Oh, okay. So these guys are, oh, of course they're the like the, the fucking progressives over yeah. here. Then I guess Bush is kind of halfway. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So that makes sense. That makes a little more sense. Oh, hold um, on. We got a super chat from Maddie. Oh. Super chat. Send a super chat earlier. Oh, I missed it. Any advice for breaking up with a BF you thought you would marry? Also, please collab with Culture to Consciousness. She's an Exmo. I think we accidentally ghosted her the last we couple We did. Of weeks. Oh, my God. I, I felt totally so bad. I forgot about we that. We got an email from them back in, like, February. No, even more recently with the, the Ruby stuff. They totally got lost in the shuffle. I just remembered. They emailed us back? They said, uh, when, what works for you? And then they didn't email again. That week was so fucking swamped anyway, so. So we're behind, but they Sorry. emailed us a long time ago, and I was going through our email because we get, like, a thousand emails from, like, 
Timu. Timu specifically <laughs> trying to like sponsor our videos. I'm like, that's not fucking happening. But so I was like going through the email and trying to delete shit. And then I saw an email from them and I was like, oh my God, this was like months ago. They probably think that we ignored them. Um, so we're not ignoring them. Evidently they emailed back, which I didn't know about because McKay just told me just now. So I'll figure out what's going on there and, and reach back out to them. Um, advice for breaking up with someone you thought you would marry. I would say go to therapy would probably be my biggest one. (laughs) Um, give yourself time and space and grace and self-compassion and And don't rush, no rush. And think about a lot of times I'll have clients use like instrumental events in their lives like that to reevaluate their relationship wants and needs and desires. So like, these are the things that I didn't get in this last relationship. And these are things that I do want. So ultimately, how can that help me make choices in the future now that I have that information? So, yep. Just something to think about. Just something. Yeah. If you up at, at this moment in time, the only thing you should be looking for is just peace or whatever. Anything. If you're just looking to find somebody that's at best two incomes. <laughs> so just take your time. It's not a race or whatever. We got married fucking young. And that's just because we're Mormons. For, yeah. For Honestly, real. I don't have a lot of good advice for you in that field. <laughs> anyway. Sorry, oh, we got okay. derailed. Thanks for the super chat, though. Appreciate so you. many of these modern presidents seemingly oblivious to anything other than themselves or congratulating each other, blah, blah, blah. In front of the man, paper trash is blowing in the wind, crumpled dollar bills, legislative documents, and like a whisper, the U.S. Constitution beneath the foot of Barack Obama. What have you done? Okay, we don't fucking... This Wait, painting got so much backlash that he made a statement about it. <laughs> there is no racial undertone <laughs> that the FM... I'm not familiar with, like, artist terms, I'm assuming. Is not black. This is not a racial painting. It's about the vanishing of American, the American dreams. Isn't it funny how that just, like, seems to overlap in those situations? Honestly, I don't want to read all the bullshit this guy's But this everything. painting got picked up by, like, news stations and things at the time. And so he was getting a lot of criticism from, oh, like, yeah. the left. And so he actually made a point to address yeah. it this time. It's not a partisan painting. Yeah, like, okay. Yeah, okay, buddy. I don't hate the Democrats. Yeah, is it... Okay. Is it? Oh, Forgotten Man. Duh. Oh, okay. Is it, uh, is it just coincidence that all of the progressives are the ones who are congratulating themselves and it's all the founding fathers and... The right. Godly conservatives. And remember, we'll harken back to the beginning... Mormons believe that a lot of these men over here on the left side of the painting are were inspired by God, especially even up through Abraham Lincoln, uh, to do what they were doing in order to lay the groundwork for the Mormon church to exist. So it's true. Just remember that. So when he's saying, oh, yeah, these people are have strayed from the path, especially these guys over here, it's because they were probably influenced by Satan or something along those lines. Anyway, we ready to move on? Yeah. To the next one. Did I miss one? No. Okay. One, one nation, nation under, under socialism. socialism. God, I don't even think this guy knows. Oh, sweet mother of God. This is why I include this one because there's not even much to it, but it's just so unhinged. Like, for real. Socialism is when Obama. Socialism <laughs> is when Obama. Oh my God. Socialism is when no constitution. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America. And not to an ideology which can never stand. One nation under socialism, divisive, with no liberty or justice for anyone. Wow, he really thought he was fucking cooking on this bitch. Oh my god. 
Uh, he had to do this another like, questions regarding this. is this. what he, like, it comes to him in the middle of the night when he's, like, half awake, and he scribbles it onto paper, and then is like, this is profound. Right. No, this dude is getting cooked and watching Tucker Carlson. Well, at the time, it was probably Bill O'Reilly, and <laughs> thinking, oh, yeah, this is going to be a fucking banger. It also doesn't really look like his face. Yeah, honestly, if I had no idea who Obama was... And I saw a picture of him next to this. I'd be like, that is not the same man. (laughs) Yeah, he doesn't really do a great job with. Yeah, I was thinking in some of the other ones, I was like, wow, he's really good at capturing people's faces. But I guess when it's just a close up, it is not. Not so much. Not so flattering. I'm (laughs) I'm really shocked he didn't put him in a tan suit. For real. God, everybody. That was such a big thing. Also, does this guy know how paper burns? No, he doesn't. Looks like molten burning like wood or flesh. something <laughs> um maddie said i'm in therapy luckily i'll also dm shalise from close to consciousness and encourage you guys to collab random note do you guys drink yes mckay jordan, does jordan brought up mike's heart i here. like lightly drink five percent alcohol beverages from time yeah. to time um i'm known to do shots from now from time to time okay so on I to the next like to one i included this one just because it it's just unsurprising oh, with man. John, I guess. Yeah. John McNaughton. Uh, Obama from Wish. socialism for me. Just, yeah. <laughs> if that's socialism, yeah, that's socialism from Wish. Let's be real. Separation of tr- church and state. This one oh, sent me. Oh, God. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> I was astounded Why? by this. The fuck? Oh my god. Jesus is in the chambers, everyone. He's in the chamber. And who is this up here? Is it this is from the Obama administration, it seems like. I think so. So this has to be the Senate. Once a year the President of the United oh, the States State of the Union. makes a speech to a joint session of Congress reporting the condition of the nation and outlines the priorities of its administration. It is called the State of the Union Address. I do appreciate that we're giving some context to our international viewers. Love ya. Oh, God. I envision Jesus speaking to this (laughs) joint session where all the leaders of our country are gathered. He looks at them from the pulpit. He pauses, and then he begins to address the assembly. He reminds them of the covenant which was made with the founders of our nation that he would protect and bless us if we remember him. And Jesus opens the Holy Bible to Psalms 33, 12 and reads the verse, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. At that moment, the chamber erupts into Wait. shouts of anger and disgust as the body of the joint session turns into a hostile mob reminiscent of the mob that shouted out to crucify him. Are we serious? Wow. Jesus, with a countenance of gentle peace, although saddened by the rejection of his offer, looks across the assembly at the angry mob. He turns and begins to exit the pulpit. The large American flag rips from top to bottom, (gasps) like the veil of the temple ripped as he hung on the cross and said, It is finished! A woman, unable to bear his glance, holds her face in shame. Words of mockery, angry shouts, and venomous threats fill the hall. Above the torn flag, engraved in the marble stone of the Congressional Chamber of Congress, are the words, In God We Trust. Oh, Oh, the the irony! irony. (laughs) A shaft of light from the court of heaven. Courts of heaven shines upon the word God as a reminder of whom they have rejected. Oh, America, why have you abandoned the rock from (laughs) whence you are hewn? As Jesus exits this unholy chamber, he turns to gaze at you the viewer of this painting and asks, what will you do now? This painting is meant to be a symbol of our government's abandonment of God and his covenant for surely he has not abandoned us, but we have abandoned him. So go back up. Who's the woman who can't bear to look at him? Oh, it's that lady. This this is like the most subtle. I wouldn't have even noticed that like nothing burger. Uh, The yeah. And Jesus. Hey, everybody. What will you do now? And everybody's just like pointing at him. Like, what, we got? Is that what is Hillary doing? Well, some people are doing angry fists. And some people are pointing. This guy's going, yeah. 
And Get him. The, the ripped flag straight up and down. Wow, that is just. I I feel like it's bordering on fucking. This is sacrilege. Fan fiction. This is fan fiction. It's almost Mormon sacrilege. Uh, almost, but again, we come back to that. Oh, America is like the foreordained land for the organization of the church. Anyway, oh my god, that is just can't see chat sorry what are you guys doing is jesus getting fisted <laughs> and jesus is of course white yes mormon jesus as will always be usual white. it's just the way the cookie crumbles in this situation all right next one crossing the swamp oh, this one also got God. a lot of attention the dunning kruger effect in full force oh my god <laughs> I know I've seen this one before. <laughs> this, now, this is just fucking patriotic sacrilege at this point. So it's Trump uh, with the lantern. Yeah. Is that? Oh, my God. It's the defector, John Bolton. Oh. <laughs> well, that's. Is that? And Sarah what, Huckabee Sarah Sanders. Sarah Sanders. Uh, Governor Sarah Sanders. Governor Sarah Sanders. Is, is that her dad, maybe? I don't know. Could be. Who's that old guy? I don't know. Some old fart <laughs> <laughs> and then the wait who's the god emperor himself who's brother <laughs> at the front of the boat who's that isn't that dude is that his lawyer what's his face what's maybe his it name? says it down there oh here we go oh, there we go nikki haley at the front nikki haley Oh, ben carson's in there too huh ben carson's jeff sessions oh, oh mike, is it pence. mike pence Melania's in there. Hold the fucking. Phone. And Ivanka. Where's Melania? Oh, there's Ivanka. No, go to the left. There's Ivanka. There's Ivanka. There's Melania. Okay, there's Melania. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. This is insane. Mike Pompeo, Sarah Sanders, Ivanka Trump, John Bolton, Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne Conway. And John Kelly. Who's? Oh, that's John Kelly. So that's oh, that's Kelly. Kelly. Oh, she's, Kellyanne's got she's the hiding. gun. She's got the the twelve gauge. Kelly got her what gun. Is she, what are they doing? What are they hunting? I don't know. <laughs> They're crossing the swamp. They're hunting rhinos, guys. And there's like alligators in there. All right, crossing the swamp by John McNaughton. Over two hundred forty years ago, George Washington suffered through Valley Forge and crossed the Delaware River to bring an astonishing victory to the Continental Army. This led what many thought was impossible to defeat a despot king and his formidable army. Today, Trump, Trump endeavors to cross the swamp of Washington, D.C. as he carries the light of truth, hope, and prosperity. The murky water of deep state is laced with dangerous vermin, perfectly willing to destroy American prosperity for their personal ideologies and financial gain. That's ironic. Uh, the deep est the establishment Democrats, never Trumper Republicans, deep state and fake news media will do all they can to stop the majority of the American people from succeeding. As an artist, I paint what feels uh, what I feel needs to be said about the current state of our country. My hope is that Trump will be remembered as the president that restored America's greatness. I want to be on the boat for freedom funny that he's facing criminal charges but whatever someone said there's no way melania would get on that boat and you're damn fucking right <laughs> yeah when was the last time you saw melania pictured with donald trump <laughs> and no way ivanka's getting on that boat either not a shot dude. no way not a shot crossing yeah, don't the forget swamp to like the stream, was a fucking fever dream deep state media okay next I'm on a boat. Everybody look at me and I'm sailing on a boat. All American Trump. This one I just don't have words for. Who thinks that President Trump's coming back? Can I get a like and follow? <laughs> this is so funny. Like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? Bro has bone spurs, but he's playing football in the fucking 1960s. I don't, I don't know football history. I couldn't tell you why is this bugged. I don't know when this would be the the leatherhead like 
time period. <laughs> My face just dropped. And they're former presidents, of course. That can't keep up with him. Of course, Obama's on the ground. Obama. Can I? Refresh I just need. It. Yeah, let's refresh this real quick because I just need to get a close up on that sneer of his. Thanks. Yeah. Just. The face only a mother could love. What the fuck? <laughs> Why is Trump's leg <laughs> Why is so he long? looking like that? We'll have to look at the description to see who's in here. Maybe they're not former presidents. One of them is. Obama's on the ground. Is that where? Under. Go down. Right there? Go down to no. the left. That's that Obama, is isn't it? Oh, no, maybe not. That dude's white. That kind of looks like uh, uh, Stallone. <laughs> Uh, so I guess he caught the interception or something. Oh, there you go. Closest to Trump. Cory Booker. Cory Booker. Three on the ground. Bill de Blasio, Joe Biden, and Barack Obama. I told you. There's Barack right there. Where's Cory Booker? Oh, right there. Right there. I was like, what? So these are the other nominees. Who the fuck is Biden supposed to be? Is that supposed to be? That is the most uncanny valley face I've ever seen in my life. No, I think that's supposed to be. Uh, Regardless, that is. What is that? That looks like that somebody skinned the face of somebody and then put it on like a foam <laughs> head that you could get at Michael's or something like that. That is uncanny. Uh, when they played football in the old days, they didn't have face masks. It was a time of blood, guts, and glory, baby. Today's politics are rough. You have to push hard for everything you get. The field is muddy, and the players can get dirty. But we have a president that has riven up, risen above the rest. The other side hates him and will do anything to destroy him. Try to take him down. Think again. He's going for the goal. Another touchdown. <laughs> He's going for the goal. Another touchdown basket. Score! <laughs> it's like he's never watched football. Who are the people? Uh, there's a lot in here that I just don't Chuck really care. Schumer, Where's Dick Bernie? Durkin. Is that Bernie? No. I still think that's Sylvester Stallone that in the background. Like no, that looks like Bernie. That's right Chuck there. Schumer right there. No. That's Chuck Schumer. Oh, maybe. Look at the glasses. That's, Go to the left. that's Schumer. There's Bernie. There's Bernie. Shout out, Bernie. Okay. Something's happening with this. Will you plug it in? Jordan has issues with cords. <laughs> I have many issues. One moment as we have a brief intermission well, and get the power situation I'm to get fixed. I'm my computer plugged in, and Baloney is biting my feet and biting the cord. He's, he's being a little gremlin under the blanket. He's sleeps at my feet during the streams and bites at my feet if I move around too much. Okay. He is eepy. He is eepy. He's just a sleepy little guy. Okay. He is eebies and eebies is sleepy. On to the next one. All right. I'm, I'm giving 15 more seconds to anyone who may have ran to the kitchen for something. So if you can hear me, now's your time to get back. 5, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, sorry. Oh, we're on to the MAGA ride. MAGA ride. MAGA, baby. Do you guys always vote for the same politicians? No. I've only voted in one election. That was the Thank last you. Time. Jordan's mic is off. I had it away from my face, I oh, think. Okay. Oh, uh, get some bourbon. That sounds pretty good. Maddie H. What was the super chat from Maddie earlier? Uh, she asked about how do we feel about Exmos that are still religious ish and believe in God. And I said everybody's on their own personal journey. So if it speaks to them. Sunny Fawn with the 12 months. Shout Hell out. yeah, Sunny. Then that's, you know. Sounds like Sunny's been here from when we started the membership. So that's dope. Um, but yeah, everybody's on their own path. So if they, you know, there's nothing wrong with people having a religious or, you know, spiritual belief system, even after Mormonism. Yeah. Any way to cope with uh, the realities of existence, you know? Yeah. 
as long as you're not falling into a, a similar belief structure as Mormonism. That's kind of disappointing to see. Anyway, wow. There's a, a lot to behold here. Yeah. So this is just cheesy and stupid, in my opinion. Yeah. Is that yay? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Please say no. No, he's not. No. Uh, yeah, these look like they're probably not. All uh, these people in the MAGA hats. Maybe Scott's in here. <laughs> With the uh, American flag nondescript uh, motorbike, which is against flag code, with the American flag flying from it. Very cute. And then the woman who that does hasn't not look been like pictured Melania. with him in like forever. That does not. <laughs> whose face is that? Because that is not Melania. I don't know. Is that H.W. Bush? No. What? It who is like the him. child on the right? What is going on there? Is that the the girl from the Gersperms memes? I just don't even. This I is just... this is another one of those ones. It's just like, why do people love portraying politicians like this, like some sort of superhero doing activities they never would fucking do? When have you ever seen Donald Trump? In any period of his life, riding a motorcycle. He's not riding a motorcycle type. He's the type that has a cameo in fucking Home Alone 2. <laughs> like, uh, it's weird. It's so cringe and weird. I wanted to paint a picture of President Trump and Melania on a jacked up motorcycle painted with the American flag and patriotism as they ride down a bumpy, crumbling road that represents the hazard, uh, hazards and the problems that his, this presidency has faced since Trump has been elected. The first sentence, that first sentence sounds Holy like he shit. was a little too that excited is... about painting this picture. Yeah. On a jacked up motorcycle, Can painted we... with the American flag, high on patriotism. Yeah. Down a bumpy road. If you look closely at his pants, you can see the silhouette of his 12-inch cock. Like, <laughs> okay, can we can we stop? Oh my Behind God. the president are a broad variety of Americans. Some are wearing their red... Most are wearing the hats. <laughs> like, this guy's military, but, like, mo the red hats is very obviously important to this uh, a veteran saluting and people of all walks of life they're all there and we are cheering on our president if you look closely in the cracks you may see something interesting there get ready this is a MAGA ride what is interesting in the cracks oh it says MAGA that's does he know what interesting means no he doesn't <laughs> that's very uninteresting <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay, next one. Okay, we're blazing through these because, Jesus, that is a hell of a clip for future use. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> More like a jacked-off motorcycle. Uh. Anyway, so interesting. Democrats playing poker. Oh, I just know. You are fake news. <laughs> <laughs> I just know this one's going to be great. Oh, God. Beto made an appearance in this one. Wow, this one is just... Elizabeth Warren, notably. Joe and Kamala. Got Bernie. So, obviously, this Cory is... Booker. These are, like, the all-stars of uh, the 2020 election. I don't know who the guy the in the front Democrat left is. Side. This guy? Yeah. That's Pete Buttigieg. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't have blonde hair. And uh, we got Cory Booker handing him an ace of clubs. If I, somebody could. Uh, what's with all the dogs? Can someone explain that to it's me? It's the dogs playing poker. It's a play on the dogs playing poker. But are they like even like in my mind, I'm like figure out what dogs These they poor actually fucking have. Dogs. And Australian then... Shepherd. Mastiff. I guess not. Dogs Golden don't Retriever, deserve this. Bulldog. And they're all kind of looking at the viewer like what the fuck is going on bernie with a cigar same with beto 
Nobody's smoking legal weed. Also, a surprise oh, appearance of a different. Oh my god, it's so meta. A different thing of his. Let's see. What's oh, the time. It's five Almost minutes to midnight. Midnight. Yep. And then the giant frame of Joe Byron Trump in the background, winking notably. Ew, that looks the, this no. Is, that looks like he had a stroke. That. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's what it looks like. John like McNaughton has never seen somebody. <laughs> oh my never god! Never seen somebody wink. Also, Elizabeth's got a fucking yappy little dog in her arm. Why is he trying to make her look lovable? Come on. And then what is Kamala what else have we got? in her hand? Kamala's also got a yappy little dog and a little drinky drink. Oh. Corey is already folded, but he's handing over that. Okay. Yeah. I don't know about poker enough about poker to really. I don't say much about this. <laughs> um, Kamala needs the, the weed because the hypocrisy would have been. Yeah. That's funny. He really missed an opportunity to that, but he doesn't see the criticism of her being a cop like that. Also, what. Somebody mentioned earlier, like, he doesn't know how to paint black people. And that's totally right. Yes. Because Corey doesn't even look black in this. Women get small dogs. Yes. Women that is such dogs. a misogynist little thing. And it's so funny because anecdotally, anecdotally, I have seen more old white dudes with yappy little dogs riding around town just doing errands than I have ever seen a woman with a yappy little dog. It's true. It's hilarious. But doesn't Cory Booker look white in this? He like at first glance, I thought he yes, was the he same color does. as yeah. Pete. It's because he can't. It he's trying to. He was able to paint Kamala though. Yeah, because Kamala's like in the light, but this is the the oh, side maybe. that's away from the light. Maybe. I'm given a little him bit the of the benefit, benefit of the, of the doubt, doubt here. Anyway, a little bit. But like, <laughs> in order to show that it's a shadow, he paints them in like the same skin tone. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> What does he have to say? Democrats playing poker. Behind closed doors, the Democrats scheme and plot to take down Trump. How many new lies will be manufactured in an attempt to smear the president to, to further impeach campaigns against him? Or to further their cam impeachment campaigns against him? Who will the next Democratic nominee for, the pre uh, for president and what will they do to get there? Jesus Christ, I can't read right now. No matter how much they lie, cheat, and steal for the presidency, they cannot fool the American people. Have you guys seen that guy on TikTok? He, he reads, like, unhinged Facebook comments. I like that guy. Where did I get the, get the idea for this? Each time I release a new painting, someone from the left would comment, there's no better, that's no better than that painting. Dogs playing poker. I just... What a great idea. This encouraged me. Oh, so he was like, the whole premise is to like troll his critics. Yeah. Not going to lie. That's pretty meta and impressive. It, I mean, it's his whole the thing. Dude can't, it's all... Yeah, the dude can't paint with shadows, but you know. Anyway, I don't want to get too much into this. Who are the dogs? What? Is, why are we asking these questions? What are the cards? Who's winning? Okay. What were they implying who's winning? Did he, pre oh my God, he predicted the 2020 election. Holy moly. There's, there's Biden with his stacks of chips and he won. Number 15, Burger King foot lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, next one. The dogs, the dogs do all look good. He sh really should just lean into a career of painting dogs because they all look pretty good. Not going to lie. You are fake news. All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is unsurprising to most people, but I just thought this was so freaking cringe. This is something else. You just, are fake uh, news. Yeah, trigger warning clowns. Oh, is that the Joker right there? That's Ronald McDonald. No, right there. You see in the middle oh, where yeah, I have, it I looks see like it's supposed to be the Joker. He really passed up an opportunity for... What the fuck? That looks... Okay. Uh to include uh John Wayne Gacy, Gacy. yeah. 
L. And he's got a oh, he's talking to all the clowns in the news media. Why is and he's, it there? <laughs> yeah. Is did I miss that? Oh my god, is that Pennywise? Oh my god, it is. Right there? Yes. Okay. There's a fucking ape right there. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Maybe this is an iteration of the Joker too. Racist alert. Also, who's that? And a mime? Do we do we classify mimes as clowns? Is there is that does that follow under the umbrella of clowndom? That kind of looks like uh, Michael Myers' mask right there next to the Joker looking. This fella. is just that is Ronald McDonald. I I didn't, wasn't even looking at that. Is that just a woman with blue hair on the right? Um. Yes. <laughs> yep, it is. Liberal. And then he's in front he's in front of the lawn with Somebody said that Marine stance one. ain't accurate and <laughs> you're one hundred percent right because that dude stands <laughs> like the a weirdest I've why. ever seen in I don't my know why life. He stands like that. Hold on. Just to uh <laughs> so people know what we're talking about. <laughs> Can I get the unedited photo? Hold on. Like, this is like he's standing. He's straight up and he's, down there. Yeah, unnatural. Nobody stands like this. I don't stand like this. I stand like this. I'm I'm going to be 100% fucking honest. This is how I stand. You should see me when when but I leans, when I take full body photos. I look, I don't know how to stand. He looks, he leans though. Like, pull up the centaur picture again. <laughs> Like he leans forward, oh, like there, he's about to fall over. Oh, don't go in there. Ah, uh, Facebook. Ah, uh, don't touch the poop. Oh, there we go. Okay, <laughs> Trump sucks. That's yeah. You're like, why does he stand like that? He this is like, like he's essentially like... that. And <laughs> you think he? Yeah. Who? Who is? He's fantasizing that he's talking with his hands down. At no, he doesn't talk like that. He talks with his hands up. Yeah, this is like the his best opportunity to just be like flat out racist in like 30 different ways in one painting. Yeah. So that's interesting. Let's see what he has to say about it. Fake news. Come look at this commotion. Oh, do you want and, me to read the oh poem? Oh my God. It it's a poem? a poem. Okay. Come look at this commotion and see what I see. The white house press corp treated marginally they cramp and they jockey for a place at the chain in the hope of asking President Trump a little something. What a that is dog water a rhyme. rhyme. <laughs> you I gotta end the stanza on the rhyme what? if you're gonna be rhyming like those little something big, something small, anything scandalous or nothing at all. A chance to make their mark on the news with a moment of glory to bolster their views. <laughs> CNN, New York Times, the channels on the left. ABC, Washington Post are all bereft of any factual journalistic or honorable slant. They cover the White House with a corruptible bent. <laughs> what? So Shakespearean that rhyme. <laughs> oh, my God. They can no longer gather in the briefing room for White House correspondence were lowered the boom. Grandstanding muckrakers, as they were called, choose to be rude, interruptive, and appalled. Okay. Anybody who's saying that Trump isn't rude and interruptive and appalling has it's lost un the plot. Lost, lost the plot. Booted to the South Lawn to stand in the sun like clowns in a circus without a mic. Who's mic? <laughs> M-I-K-E? Who's I don't Mike? Know. Do we write it? Do we spell it M-I-K-E? Short no! for microphone? M-I-C! I know. But like phonetically, that doesn't no, really make sense. No, that's not okay. Without a mic for each one, now they cramp and they jockey for a place at the chain in the hope of asking Trump a little something. This is so bad. This rhyming Again? is like, oh my God. Here comes the president, commander in chief. It's Donald J. <laughs> Trump to give them a brief. What will he say? Will he tarry and choose to answer their accusations, questions, and spews? He stops on the asphalt and looks over the fray. The Marine one is waiting to take him away. They shout and Whisk jockey to make him respond. But President Trump only answers those he's called on. Wow. Congratulations. Good job, buddy. 
He looks at the correspondence and gives them a stare. I would answer your question and always be fair, but your clowns, pantomimes, and innocuous gloats, pompous, grandstanding, obnoxious showboats. Pantomimes? John McNaughton would know a little bit, of, a little something about pantomiming. Yeah. Okay, same stanza again, except for, but he glares at them, stares at them, and will politely refuse. I will not speak to you because you are fake news. <laughs> God. Oh my God. This is so This is so crazy. bad. Crazy. I'm just astounded. Okay. Next one because I can't. No look little at blurb this. about the clown cores? Come on. No, none. <laughs> Man, you get a mic and you get a mic. Yeah, everybody gets a mic. He's the o- Oprah of microphones. Let's close that. So just we keep on rolling. This one's oh my, my favorite. God. This one's my favorite. This makes me very sad to be a fan of Halloween. Jordan, I I looked over at Jordan's shoulder when she's putting this together. I was like, how have I never seen this? This is. This is unhinged. Beyond unhinged. This is like a level of unhinged that I don't even think I can like. Yeah, we got. Explain. Sleepy Mummy Joe and. Chuck Schumer. What is his little nickname for Chuck Schumer? I don't remember. Is this supposed to be Kamala? Kamala's a witch. Witch Kamala and Nancy Pelosi and Hillary and Crooked Witch Hillary. And of oh, course, yeah. in spirit, he had to include the little Jeffy, Jeffy Epstein. Oh my even god! His, even though his boy, also I didn't even see was that with <laughs> Jeff. Ghost Jeffrey Next up, Epstein. Bill Clinton. And I don't even know who that is. We'll have to go down. But of course, Obama's the fucking devil. Because... Of course, because racist ass insane. De- I'm going to put up a fucking everybody in the United States, I guess abroad, too, because maybe this has trickled over abroad. Let's start a poll. Did you <laughs> were you told Obama. that by like your parents or whoever, maybe grandparents that Obama was the Antichrist and he was going to, like, destroy Christianity when he was running for president. I'm going to put in a poll. Hold on. That's what I was told. Obama. When I was in fifth grade, we did a who do you want to be president, and I picked Barack Obama, and my mom didn't talk to me for, like, a week. (laughs) Jordan's mom is just not... Oh God! <laughs> I just, I just want to see something. I, I just need to confirm that I wasn't the only one. <laughs> oh, is it Nadler? Let's go down. Let's see, Jerry Nadler. Did it make way you laugh to go? Or did it make you scream? Kind of both. Let's see. There is no justice when laws are ignored. Here lies the truth. <laughs> um. What are the other ones? Oh, the fucking pumpkin with the mask. The pumpkin with the mask, of so course. So we're in the modern day here. Ooh, a black cat under the foot of Hillary. What are the other? Why does she have a red shoe? What? Okay. Awesome pumpkins, not going to lie. Skull with a mask. Rip, free, free speech. Evil wins when good does nothing. Oh, God. That is not that quote or how that goes at all, but okay. And, the, yeah, they're just they're just vibing up in here. Okay, I'm, I think we've got enough votes in here to know. 34% of you said that you were told that, disappointing. which is very disappointing. Oh, is it the wizard? They look like sneakers, though, is what I'm... I guess it could be Ruby Slippers because she's the wicked, the wicked witch of the West. Of course. Grow up, Doug. Oh my God. The wicked witch of the East, bro. Uh, the scariest Halloween painting of all time. I can't. Have read you poem. seen? Is this a? Oh, I don't. Oh my God! It is a poem. I'm gonna read this one. Did it make you laugh or did it make you scream? <laughs> <laughs> Trick or Treat by John McNaughton. The scariest Halloween painting of all time. Have you seen? Did it make you laugh or make you scream? A haunted building for the accusator. 
is that accusator? Accusator. Was once a place of great rapport, fenced from within and now from without. We have no idea what they're talking about. I got no idea what you're talking Buddy, about. Buddy, do you have C-SPAN? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you can literally watch <laughs> on C-SPAN. The mummy of this ghoulish troop fills his bucket with treats and goop. Missed opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Follow his lead and ask for treats, but his tricks are filled with painful deceits. She holds the keys that were once procured, the potions and spells that have been that have occurred, and in the future she may announce a coveted chair in the people's house. The rat eats the leftovers from the grass. From the peculiar parties of the past, their crimson shoes hiding in the niloplast. What the fuck is niloplast? I don't know. That's supposed to be like fake grass? Astroturf? Um, then from the city that never sleeps, he finds a way to spin his gore. But <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> politics is his life pursuit and less is less and more is more holy shit that is niloplast represent in poetry okay shall we hail the queen of darkness the witchiest of the west she stirs her power to coalesce and place the country under house arrest COVID there reference. is a ghost that walks amongst them he hangs like an elf on a shelf Oh my but god. If you think he's dead, just remember he did not kill himself. Oh my god. <laughs> this is He did not just compare Jeffrey Epstein to an elf on a shelf. <laughs> oh my god. They say he's slick as a willy <laughs> and what? a heart full of rot. Did I do that to them? I never. Of course not. Who's that supposed to be? I don't even know. Oh, is that Wait, get down Willie? to the devil. <coughs> That's not the devil. He's not even bad. His policies are just the launching pad to fundamentally change a country that's blessed blessed for more crime, division, and social unrest. Who's this that runs the committee? He's protecting the dirty nitty gritties. <laughs> Not a single Republican he won't issue. He'll suck the blood right out of you. Okay. Remember, there's no justice when laws are ignored. Here lies the truth across the board. That when free speech shall rest in peace, evil win and good. Evil wins and good retreats. <laughs> That was the most unhinged uh, thing. Slick as a willy. Of course, it's got to be William Clinton. What's oh his middle name? God. I don't know. Anyway. Okay, get me the hell away <laughs> this from this. So this was like terrible, bro. I can't with this right now. That was a fun read. Yeah, it is a long poem. I'm sorry. No more poems. Of course, I was also doing it in the voice. So I just know story time with McKay and Kazoo goes hard. <laughs> Yes. Oh, Jefferson. Thank you. Jefferson. Thanks. Thanks for the snaps, everybody. It truly was a performance. Last Supper of a Blessed Nation. Oh, okay, Jesus. this one is unhinged, too. Like the last ones. Jordan, you're supposed to beatbox in the next one. I'm gonna fucking vomit right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Get ready, y'all, because Trump's at the Last Supper. Apparently with the Founding Fathers also. And this is Ronald crazy. Reagan. Uh, old presidents. Yeah, we got... Abe. Abe. Honest Abe. And we got... Uh, oh, fuck. Reagan. Is that JFK? No, JFK. And then Ta Trump and Obama, who is probably supposed to be Thomas. And then Joe Byron, of course. And then Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> and then the main man himself, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Hubastank Christ, um, with an hourglass 
and a gavel. I don't remember the point. Uh, I don't remember Jesus ever uh, doing the gavel. Also, shout out to the Mormon scriptures that he snuck in right there with the tabs and everything. That's a quad stack right there with the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants. Of course and it Pearl is. And Christ. So shout out to John McNaughton for including that. And Why we got does Jesus Georgie. look like Post Malone here? He kind of does, not going <laughs> to lie. I, I wonder who he used for his Jesus model. And then we got some founding fathers and uh, Ronald. Um, my George. My headstone is a gender neutral bathroom Reagan. And then, of course, Billy Clinton and FDR. FDR has got some assault rifles on the table. Oh. A mirror. Okay. Maybe because he's been some money. Money over the American flag and keys to the kingdom or the nation, the founding fathers. We already talked about that. The. Spilled constitution wine glass spilled wine justice is that a heart it looks like it and a feather oh show me jesus's grippers oh check. <laughs> peep the jesus grippers he's got his dogs out <laughs> um, this is what i came here to and see then, oh the shackles of slavery because the great emancipator right damn dude Shout out to all my homies that know that this these are actually the robotic legs of <laughs> St. Peter. <laughs> Shout out Futurama. Oh, man. Is this like... I don't want to read this. This is just... just it is just nonsense. It's getting so... So... Everyone knows what he believes at this point. At this point. No other grippers in sight, damn it. Wiki feet. Yeah. <laughs> Straight to wiki feet. These are all getting a really for free. You know what? You know what? That would get a high rating from me on wiki feet. That's five stars. Five stars. Trump is Andrew. I don't even. Yeah, I don't even know other than Saint Peter because of that one Futurama episode. I don't know who the other dudes are supposed to be. So, and then we got the the U.S. Capitol in the background, obviously, because Jesus had the Last Supper in front of the U. <laughs> <laughs> The, the modern U.S. Capitol before he went and was crucified, right? It makes total sense. This guy went, what if the Last Supper was American? Literally needing to. So I included some Mormon ones in here because I thought it would be interesting. Oh, okay. We're moving into the. Oh, yeah. We'll go back to. The, should we go back to the NFTs now? We can do it at the end. Okay. We'll do it at the end. I just figured because there was a Trump one. Well, it comes back. The political ones come back. Okay. This is just an intermission of oh. Mormons. Isn't this crazy? Whoa, is this a child? Hold on. Let me let me redo this. Because it's uh, Jesus Christ, time traveler. Yeah. This is really similar to... This has to be based on... I know the exact The Arnold Freiburg of. one. That they have the printout in at church. Yep. That they have in the Mormon abridging the plates. Watch it be the same one. I would laugh, but I know this is from the the gospel art book. This is the one that he's definitely drawing inspiration from. Now, I will appreciate. There's very little I appreciate about this kind of art. Who's this by? Oh, this is Tom LaBelle. Sorry. I think I said Arnold. Um, this artist uh, took the the view of the Book of Mormon as being in Central America, and he adds some things in there to imply that a lot of the occurrences of the Book of Mormon were in like the Guatemala region. Um, there's a particular one that... I can there's you can spot a quetzal which is the national bird of Guatemala and then like other things like jaguars and I think this is also a quetzal failure right here which is kind of cool because there is some other cultural things thrown in there that is but accurate to the region but obviously still cultural appropriation yeah it's uh saying hey yeah people who lived here in Guatemala uh are descendants of Jews that came here in 450 BC like 
Okay, buddy. Anyway, let's go back to this one. But you can see like the big stacks of plates and whatever, and he just really took that. So and ran explain with it. what abridging the plates is. Okay, so the Book of Mormon, as told in the Book of Mormon, is an abridgment from the Nephite records that were passed down from prophet to prophet and written. And so um, basically what Mormon did was took all of the things that God commanded him to write in these gold plates that were eventually given to Joseph Smith to translate, write all, abridge all of the important histories into the gold plates from a lot of these other brass records. And uh, that way it would be passed on to us. It's a book for us. And uh, anyway, um, so that's what he's doing. I don't know, what, I don't the know kid what this kid is, kid is doing. doing. He's making uh, paper cranes or something like that. What did like he that. say in the description that the kid is doing? Also, did you peep that right there? The Liahona. The Liahona, the golden ball that apparently guided them on the ocean before compasses were really a thing, or at least contained compasses. So I'm not reading this whole thing, but he included some things in here the golden plate, sort of Laban. Leahona, Tybal of Liberty, Urban Thumb, and countless records of the Holy Prophets. If you look closer, you can see the sacred mystic symbol of Christ written on different objects in the painting. And beneath the table is the young boy Moroni oh, it's playing Moroni. at his father's feet. Oh, that's so cute. What's the sacred mystic symbol of Christ? I have no idea. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Is it that? Hold on. Um... Or is it? How are we Dude, Mormon we, our entire lives? Are we lives? playing I Spy? I feel like the sacred mystic symbol of Christ is like, oh, is it that? Oh, that's the title of liberty. That's the title of liberty. That he'd be like, Pre pledge your allegiance to this or I'm going to fucking stab you with my sword. Which is the sword of Laban? Probably that. And then, oh, there's His name the was Nephite Mormon. interpreters. Yeah, that's why it's called the Book of Mormon because Mormon abridged all the records. Moroni is a terrible name. <laughs> Ha, classic Moroni playing in the records room while his daddy's doing work. Amanda on a bridge. It's giving work work from home vibes. We love it. Okay, on to the next one. We can stare at this one. one all day. Yeah, this is like really crazy. On to the next one. On to the next one. The first vision. Which version of the first vision? I guess we'll find out. Oh, it's the official one, the most recent one. How do I know all this? I was a fucking missionary, dude. I mean, I knew all this. I didn't even go on a mission. Yeah. I don't have the same knowledge base that you do, but they indoctrinate church history stuff into you. Is it? I don't think heavily. it's the Jesus fish. I, Mormons don't do that. No, they don't. Oh, interesting. Caroline Boyd asked, Is Moron isn't Moroni the angel that goes on top of the temples? You would be correct. You would be correct. But suddenly a whole bunch of Mormons are like, no, not all the temples have Moroni on top of them, which obviously fucking not, because I'm sure there are places that are like, no, you can't put that gaudy golden statue at the top of the steeple. Yeah. That's and nice. now all that, that they're not doing that, they're moving away from the Moroni's on the top. And I swear to God, if they don't put Moroni back on the top of the Salt Lake City Temple, I'm going to have, I'm going to throw a fit because they are erasing like everything that I grew up with. And they're just trying to pretend that it wasn't a thing. Mom, there's some guys in the woods wearing bed sheets, yeah. literally. Anyway, uh, I'm getting off my chant, my tan. <laughs> They're serenading. But I just wanted to include some of the religious yeah. ones so that you guys could see that he does have some that are just like very Mormon and not unhinged by Mormon standards. Yeah. This is crazy because it's not even accurate as per what I learned because he said he saw a pillar of light directly above his head above the brightness of the sun and uh that is not directly above his head that is uh at ground level thank you very much and he also went with the uh temple style depiction of indeed jesus and elohim which is kind of interesting because most that's not something you really see so yeah the the, the white full beards and the really full eyebrows is really an uncanny valley territory 
Oh, God. If there's a NASCAR in this, I'm ending stream. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a good night. We'll see you later. Bye. God. Okay, just kidding. <laughs> what? Just, I just, this is so. Why has he gotten cringe. progressively worse at painting it's recently, even, apparently? Like, it's not even painting anymore. Dude, it's not this even is a like... car that I would have drawn when I was in fifth grade. Like, I am not an artist at all. That That's saying big something. This is just like. <laughs> It's not even like art anymore. Like this is just like Trump fanfic just beyond at this point. Like I it's not even like I can't even dignify this he, by calling it art. He can't even keep his fucking story straight in this. Like down here he's got let's go Brandon, fuck Joe Biden. And then McNiff uh is that just McNaughton right there? Forty five, forty seven, implying that he was the forty fifth president. He's going to be the forty seventh president, and right below it, Trump won. Okay, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is he going to be the forty fifth and forty seventh president, or did he win two consecutive terms? <laughs> Why is the car so thick? It's a good question. <laughs> Damn boy, he thick. <laughs> he got He's that probably America never first. driven a car. You're of probably course. not wrong. <laughs> He can drive a golf cart. He's maybe. in his advanced years, and his kids don't let him drive anymore. Definitely not. Yeah, we got the forty-seven, of course, because he's going to be the forty-seventh. But Trump won two consecutive terms, right? The MAGA brand tires, their dog water. Never buy MAGA brand tires. All the MAGA hats in the crowd. Yep, all the MAGA hats. What do you? Since the leftist lunacy of twenty twenty, Americans have watched as joe biden and the democrats have run our country into the ground after a great nascar victory the world heard the fans chanting a phrase that has been dubbed by cnn then as let's go brandon this new clarion call for patriots everywhere reminds us who our real president is and what our hope and aspiration is for 2024 let's go brandon john mcnaughton i'm telling your fucking bishop that you say Let's go, Brandon, which is just a stand-in for saying, fuck. <laughs> just say it, buddy. Oh, okay. I want go you to be a big one. boy. And I want you to just say, fuck. It feels good. It feels it good. It feels good. But he might take your temple recommend if you do that. It's true. Okay, before you click on this one. Oh, God. Okay, this is the end of the PowerPoint, but this is the photo that started it all. And if you're not aware before we start this let's give some background on who the people are that are in this photo namely tim ballard yep okay so tim ballard do you want me to talk about who tim ballard is tim ballard is very recently formerly the founder and president of operation underground railroad which is an organization that is dedicated to helping children who are being trafficked around the world because Tim Ballard was formerly um, an agent for Homeland Security and in a total Supposedly. upset, uh, allegedly. They're not able to confirm that. Yeah, nope, of course. And uh, it was so upset with how the little he could do because of all the government bureaucracy or whatever – whatever anyway very recently he was ousted from that position we could probably talk a little bit more about it um but let's first view this because it is just i couldn't find it on his website you couldn't nope did he take it down i don't know so i had to pull it up through this trib article so you're gonna have to zoom in. oh this is from 2017 so this has been around for a while 2017 was like some of the big years for OUR, by the way. Oh, yeah. So if you will look here, we got Tim Ballard right front and center carrying a child slave. Is that Tim or is it the guy behind him? No, that I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Tim. But he's blonde. Is he? Who I would be the Tim's who would be in the him. middle then? Scroll out of the article and see. Jordan didn't even read the article. No, I didn't. Uh, painted into underground room, wrote our Ballard and his wife depicted carrying children. Yep. 
See, they're behind. And then who's in the front? Oh, yeah. See, historical figures including Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, yep, Abraham right Lincoln. Can we get a larger? Do I really just have to do it like this? Go away, stupid ad. <laughs> Mia Love in here is in here, which I think is so stupid. You got Abe over there and probably George Washington. And, yeah, Harriet Tubman is supposed to be right there. And tag yourself and you if you're in a john mcnaughton painting but yeah who is this guy does he front? just not know hair color no that's definitely tim in the back with his wife then who is that guy supposed to be but look at look at this like heavenly aura right here is that supposed to be like modern jesus or something let's go down there i was gonna look Ballard, a former U.S. Homeland Security special agent, appreciates the symbolism of the artwork's historical figures. Uh, they are flanked by figures whom the painter refers to as contemporary abolitionists or slave stealers. Uh, Ballard's friends and supporters, ranging from Tony Robbins and Glenn Beck to Utah Representative Mia Love. Um... At the center of the painting is a white man carrying a black child walking forward on a railroad. Oh, sorry. I thought you were reading from your computer. No, it was on there. Go up. Did I go past it? Yeah. Is a white man carrying a black child walking forward on a railroad track. The man, the kind of every man figure that McNaughton offers. Oh, in was his it works every is man? flanked by historical and contemporary figures. Okay, so. So that's why. At least it's not like total white saviorism on Timmy. Eh? It looks like the youtube video that he had on his channel describing it also says unavailable oh dude he privated that shit after so uh, this is i'm thinking down. he took down potentially the our stuff you're you better believe that he did because, that's crazy because tim ballard was recently removed booted as the founder and i think he was at the time ceo or way up high position um of OUR because of various scandals that are now coming out now, including, um, like sexual assault. Um, yeah. Uh, at the time he was stepping away without any clarification on what that yes. was. So if you are unaware, um, Tim Ballard and partnered with angel productions, which does vid angel and, uh, is it Angel the Studios? Chosen, yeah, Angel Studios, yeah. They they do the Jesus show, The Chosen, um, and they produced The Sound of Freedom. And not long after The Sound of Freedom was released, the organization said that he stepped away from OUR, which is bizarre because he is the founder. Oh my the god, face of OUR. this this guy is like a fucking rock star to people who have bought into this shit um like as evidenced by this painting and the fucking the biopic like it was such a big deal and it's all about like his narrative which is, is a narrative because it's his movie, yeah you aware. it's his story of how things played out which is not entirely the truth it's more closely narrative than it is the actual truth um and there are articles out there that can show you that but it's come out more recently that he was actually removed from his position it was not on his own free will and volition unless it was coerced but there was a lot going down and also even after all the uh oh let me pull up this this photo real quick and then he was accused of basically human trafficking yeah. so it, especially they are based in utah and um, he is especially notable in Utah and among Mormons because of that. Because he is Mormon, if we didn't clarify. Yeah. He is Mormon, and um, he has used his Mormon connections. Uh, no X on that one. <laughs> to uh, further the agenda of OUR, or probably more accurately, further the agenda of um, what he wants to do. So here's just very poignant 
photo uh, to kind of paint you guys a picture of who Tim Ballard is. This is Tim Ballard right here. And on the other side of the photo is Glenn Beck, which if you don't know who Glenn Beck is, he is a political commentator. Oh, God, go away. That's our joint Reddit account. That's fine. Um, he is a political commentator. He has his own show. He is also a Mormon. Of I, Actually, he was a Mormon convert um, a lot of years ago, and a lot of Mormons kind of like him because he's in that space and he's he's fucking awful when it comes to that but he is the the founder of the blaze and all and uh works in collaboration with all those people over at the blaze and then in the middle here is mormon apostle and russell ballard who is a current apostle but just this past week there was a um a statement made by the yeah. church's spokesperson and they uh, essentially disavowed Tim Ballard for morally objectionable behavior in relation to things he was saying about things that uh, Russell Ballard was doing and the nature of the relationship that they had. Um, and I've. So the church is trying to distance themselves yeah. from Tim by saying that him and M. Russell Ballard yeah. weren't connected in any way and, and they're not related. Um, I've heard through, um, who was it? Uh, it was Black Smo on TikTok. So this is a secondhand story of a secondhand story. So obviously it's, I can't really confirm it for you, but he had a friend who was friends with Tim Ballard. And he said that on multiple occasions that Tim Ballard had brought up his relationship with um, M. Russell Ballard and had mentioned that he had received apostolic blessings uh, for him and his wife uh, regarding to the work that they were doing and uh, all kinds of stuff about uh, the, the relationship that they had had. So it could be that these things did happen and the church doesn't want that kind of thing associated with a person like Tim with all the news that has been coming out. Um, so they're trying to distance themselves from him because there is rather shocking stuff that is being released now because prior to it was kind of widely known that they were like going to fortune tellers and tarot readers and stuff to help them they find were going to this traffic children psychic lady who had visions about like nephi and shit which mind you as per the rule book the mormon um the official guidebook that is against of, the rules. <laughs> it is explicitly against the rules that you're not supposed to seek out these kinds of like it is associated with Satan like as well. Nature. So, yeah, there was also that. But then we're hearing reports that he was using funds from OUR for personal effects like a Corvette and even worse that he was. No, that wasn't him. That was his. Oh, that was somebody else. That was like the one of. The high up people that worked at his company. okay well that's even cuter yeah um even worse that he was using the scenarios where they were going to into going abroad and posing as characters so that they could infiltrate these child trafficking rings allegedly and uh he would use that and have women who aren't his wife play the role of his wife and he would use those situations allegedly to um force himself on them in order to make it more believable or whatever so which mind you he's married <laughs> and he's mormon he's a fucking mormon so they came out and they said this whole thing and then the other day he like stand out stood outside and like delivered his whole manifesto about like and he said don't believe this anything is they say not real everything is a lie yeah um but here's the thing about tim though here's the thing that gets me about this situation about mormons especially because the way that tim has set up our and the way that they have set up the media around all of this is basically Tim uses the media as a tool to kind of embolden his message. So he has been saying from the very beginning, like, you know, 
the deep state, big media, all of these companies, like the movie yeah. industry is all out to tarnish my name, to discredit what I do because they see what I do as a threat and they're trying to bring me down. So any criticism that he gets or any people calling him out for gross behavior or doing weird things, it's all attributed to, well, everyone goes after Tim Ballard because of what he's doing. Yeah, it's it's the the godless left that are going against Tim Ballard because they hate children and they want everybody to have free abortions, mandatory, and just it all plays into that weird reactionary uh, belief system that everybody's out to just like end the human race if they're not voting for republicans and donald trump and everything like that so kathy white thank you for your super chat ballard's um, story seems like a deflection from the ruby and jody situation i mean it is nice and convenient for them right now but it yeah. looks bad either way <laughs> they uh, they're lucky because when people are talking about the road the ruby and jody situation they're talking about it in the lens of ruby is a um a youtuber and yeah. they almost, almost never, I've had people sending stuff and I, in, in a lot of situations, they're not even talking about Jody at all. So they're kind of off scot-free on that one. Um, but this one is more interconnected with, um, Mormonism. So the other anyway. thing with the movie, particularly like with the movie, he said, and we didn't see the movie obviously because that's ridiculous. And, we did have a family member who saw the movie who said that they've been trying to get this movie into theaters for like decades and Hollywood and the movie industry stopped them from premiering it at like every turn and it finally yeah. got through. And so it's things like that that people think there's just like this like figurative army of people who are like going against Tim Ballard. Yeah. And that's why they can just discredit all of this information because it's like, Oh yeah. They well, want to keep trafficking the children or whatever. Yeah. And then they, they astroturfed the, the premiering of the, well, not the premiering, but the box office numbers by, and this family member, I mean, bless their heart. They were like, oh, even at the end, they had this little link that you could go to and you can buy a ticket for somebody else to go to. And I heard a lot of people talking about that. I was like, as soon as I heard that, I was like, how do you cash in on these free movie tickets? Because it sounds to me like they were having people buy movie tickets so other people could see it. And then OUR would buy mo movie tickets that would go unclaimed so that they could buff their numbers so which is insane yes you guys insane just incredible shit so people are bought into this like even glenn beck he went on twitter and he was like this is not my church my church would never go out and publicly disavow a public person like okay have you ever heard of um kate kelly okay buddy i know that's what you like to be your narrative um, they excommunicate people thread. all the time. Yeah, he had this whole thread about it, and he ended up deleting some, if not the whole thread, um, for Here, reasons unbeknownst to, to us. So once this news statement came out, the church started doing what they always do when things look bad for them, which is starting to delete evidence in the middle of the night when no one is looking. Um, and so... I texted McKay the link to it, but basically there were articles on the church's website. I texted it to you about uh -huh. Tim Ballard multiple, but after all this, like Tim scandal broke, then all these links are broken now. Oh yeah. Let me, let me throw it up on screen. I've got to copy and paste it over in this region over here. Yeah, so they they turned and burned. Yeah, and like if you go on Google and you search um, Tim Ballard LDS, I think, because I I was like, oh, let me. Um, <laughs> so I was talking to somebody about it, and they were like, oh, well, Vice is not 
a reputable source or whatever. <laughs> and then I was like, well, that's funny because Deseret News included Vice as a source and Deseret News is the official, is uh, not the official of the church, but it is a church owned publication that leans toward the faithfulness of the Mormon uh, gospel. Anyway, um, but I stumbled upon this because I saw the link and I was like, oh, what does it say on the church website? And I pulled it up and said, page not found. So, and they do that a lot. Yeah. Like they do that with like ex Mormon stuff. Like if ex Mormons find stuff that's like hypocritical or like straight out bad, like they don't use TikTok, yeah, they just... but they use ex Mormons as a resource to find things that they need to pull from their website. Um, so they do this often where we'll pull up, like we'll have old websites and then it will mysteriously be gone. Um, so other thing I was going to bring up after the church came out with the statement, let me read it to you. Let me find it. Camila. Yes, I did know about the. CIA-backed uh, coup in Chile in 1973 with Allende. So here's the statement that the church made about Tim, just so you have it for reference. So President Ballard, the apostle, and Tim Ballard, no relation, established a friendship a number of years ago. That friendship was built on a shared interest in looking after God's children wherever they are and without regard to their circumstance. However, that relationship is in the past. For many months, President Ballard has had no contact with the founder of Operation Underground Railroad. The nature of that relationship was always in support of vulnerable children being abused, trafficked, and otherwise neglected. Once it became clear Tim Ballard had betrayed their friendship through the unauthorized use of President Ballard's name for Tim Ballard's personal advantage and activity regarded as morally unacceptable, President Ballard withdrew his association. President Ballard never authorized his name or the name of the church to be used for Tim's personal or financial interests. In addition, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints never endorsed, supported, or represented OUR, Tim Ballard, or any projects associated with them. Yeah, that broken link says CAP. Yeah. Capital letters. President Ballard loves children all over the world. It has been his mission and life's work to look after them, care for them, and point them to their savior. And this came from um, the church's spokesperson that does all their like media requests. Yeah. Um, there actually is a little bit more in this. Um, I did right before we went live, saw a, a, uh, little video put together by the nuance. Ho, Kara Burrell, Bless. shout out, um, friend of the show. About Where none other up? than Jordan page, Jordan you guys, page. our favorite, our fave. If you didn't know, we have a video on Jordan page. She is my least favorite next to Ace passengers, Mormon influencer. So what Jordan's going to say is important because it's going to illustrate my point. Very, very, very well. <laughs> Hold on. Let me zoom in on this. I know Instagram is not like a safe space for <laughs> zooming in. <laughs> we got to. I need to explain. If you can't read down here, it says Tim, uh, some in the question box. Uh, it says Tim Ballard. I'm I'm staunch supporters. Okay, he radiates light of Christ. I don't believe rumors. I seem to be the only one. One thing, whether you like Tim Ballard or not, um, this is important to note that my church doesn't denounce people. That doesn't really happen, like ever. <clears throat> and they don't. Bullshit. Wrong don't announce things in the way that they do it um it's fake news what's coming out is fake news jesus christ of latter-day saints okay this is a cutaway thank you kara of mormon stories with vice the one of the about, reporters from vice talking yeah. about the article that that she got from the person that gave her the information yeah. from the church mormon stories shout out john Lisa's friend of the show statement to us in response to a request for comment quite a bit of time went by between our request for comment and the church getting back to us with this statement. This was not rushed. This was not panic. Um, they asked for it 
to be attributed to a spokesperson. This is pretty common, especially when someone is speaking institutionally and not personally. Whether you believe in um, Tim Ballard oh. and what he's doing or not, my my church as an organization doesn't um, go about things the way that that. This is not a press release. This is a response to a request for comment. I can't find any evidence that LDS Newsroom ever runs the comments that they give to news outlets. So there's a very big difference between a press release and a statement to a news outlet. The Trib, Desert News, TV stations asked if our statement that we ran was legitimate, was really from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and confirmed that it was. They got the same statement from... Uh, it's happening right now, and so it's, it's fake, unfortunately. <laughs> Again, remove Tim from this. I'm a supporter. I know him personally, and a oh. lot of what you hear and read is fake, like in terms of the negative stuff, but my church doesn't go about things the way they're saying, so that is false. We are legally, ethically, <laughs> and morally obligated to approach people about whom we're reporting for comment, and the substance of our report was about the relationship between Elder Ballard and Tim Ballard, uh, as described in a tranche of documents that we got under a public records request. We are not just going to dump that information online without giving everybody involved every chance to give us additional information, context, clarify things, dispute things, push back, say what they want to say. That's journalism. It's very, very basic. False rules. Oh, roll the Curb Your Enthusiasm <laughs> credits music. <laughs> Thank you, Kara Nuance Ho, for boom. putting that together. Um. This doesn't surprise me from yeah. Jordan. She is like the worst for this shit. And this is the point that I want to make is that this is going to be very interesting to see how this plays out in Mormon circles, because the church has the leadership of the church has just handed down a very black and white statement about <coughs> Tim Ballard. Oh, you are the relationship to Mormonism, Elder Ballard, all of these things. They've set it out pretty black and white and now tim has gone out and disagreed with this and saying that it's bullshit and now the members of the church are going to have to decide do i believe tim or do i believe leadership and years ago i would have said that's a simple answer to a simple question members of the church will always side with leadership of the church and for a lot of mormons yeah. that is definitely the case but there Ooh, the are the last some four years whoa divisiveness it's crazy but big voices you have to remember that jordan page is a highly highly influential person in the mormon community especially for mormon women and so for outspoken mormons with decent platforms to come out and say i don't believe this this yeah. is fake news i know tim and he's not like this like all of those things yeah. this is going to create problems well, and it's it's just so funny what she's saying because it's not true they they have total tunnel vision when the current thing is going on because if you think back to when the whole arizona csa case was in the what was that publication that uh came out with it that whole article which one about the arizona csa thing I can't think of what it was anyway, but the church put out a statement to correct the record with their side of the story, which is only alleged. There's there's nothing. The church will correct these publications if they are feel like they're being misrepresented. And there are people who are out there that are like, oh, it may have come from this guy who works for church PR, but it was probably just his opinion. OK, from the from his official corporate church pr the head of the pr department sending an email to vice and saying these things if it did not reflect what the church was the stance of the church they would correct the record on in their own spot they wouldn't go to anybody else they would make a statement on their website and they would link it on their facebook and all of that shit just like they did with that article so when you're looking at these things, you're keeping track of these things. It's easy to see that the, they just don't want it to be true. So they're going to just say, ah, it sounds like fake news to me. I know Tim. I think he's a great guy. There's a lot of lies that people say about him. And I won't, I don't doubt that a lot of people are lying about Tim Ballard 
because he's doing a bad thing. I do not believe what he says about their numbers, the kids that they're rescuing. He's getting so much money in donations that go tax free and not a lot of it is going out to doing really anything. So it's really hard to believe that anything that they're doing is factual, effective, or like well, and here's anything of this sort. Here's the statement that Tim made after the statement from the church came out about them not being besties with him. Tim from OUR went on to say that I'm a faithful member in good standing in the church. I believe in Jesus, the Holy Scriptures, and I believe in our faith with my whole heart. That will never change. It has been alleged that an LDS church spokesperson issued a statement about me through a tabloid that is often hostile to people of faith. My (laughs) church has not publicly verified the statement's authenticity. We are also highly suspicious about the timing of such a statement, given its close proximity to Mitt Romney's announcement that he is retiring. My own public comments about my prayers, about future plans, and the fact that the LDS church does not engage in political activity, which is false. So <laughs> I just want to say he's funny. My church has not call, uh, made a statement to say that this is uh, an official statement. They made buddy, a statement. Buddy, you're such good fans or such good friends with M. Russell Ballard. Why don't you just call him up and tell us what he says? Right. Of, cor- of course, unless maybe you lied about that. So this also comes with the information that I think John DeLynn officially, I think he was the first one to bring it up, that allegedly Tim Ballard is wanting to run for Mitt Romney's Senate seat because Mitt Romney is retiring. This is all pretty much dropped like right after Mitt Romney was said he was retiring. Which McKay and I had the conversation the other day that if Tim has gone pretty pretty right. He's gone he's like in my opinion in the QAnon hole if not getting really close to it. And if he's gonna. No I have seen him talk about adrenochrome which is the crux of the all of this Pizzagate and QAnon conspiracy that there's this cabal of satanic Satan worshippers that are stealing children to torture them and harvest adrenochrome like blatant anti Semitism and it is so clear what exactly is going on here. And so because of that, McCain and I were talking the other day the church is very meticulous about their public image. They don't move on impulse and they don't move without careful consideration. And I know that the doctrine and everything is stupid and ridiculous, but they pay people big money to give the church a good name. And so this statement was not an impulsive statement, in my opinion. This is 100% authentic. It was not given in a way that is different from any other statement that the church has ever given, and they don't make impulsive moves like this. So our thought is... It is studied out. The church is always a few steps ahead when it comes to public image. So, of course, if Tim's running for office and he's going to start spouting all this crazy right-wing shit... Because, yes, Mormons are by and large conservative, but, like, they're not usually, like, yeah. QAnon conservative. Not all of them, anyway. And so what is well, the church going to do? They're going to distance Mitt Romney. themselves. Yeah. They're Mitt gonna Romney was the biggest uh, presidential candidate since Joseph Smith. And Mitt Romney is, I'm, I'm not going to say he's moderate by any means, but, like, compared to where we sit today... He is. Mormons have turned on Mitt Romney because of how comparatively moderate he is uh, for, to other Republicans. So, yeah, th- when they were they were okay with that, but now we've gotten out into the sticks with beliefs, and they're like, okay, we don't. That looks bad for us. We don't want that. And there's also, you know, Tim is kind of sketchy in my opinion. So there might be some things that that have gone on between the two of them that we don't know about. Like there was somebody in the ex Mormon sub, I think, or somebody that told John maybe 
somebody said that um, Tim would 100% bring up Elder Ballard's name, especially for like the big donors, like the people who donated money to OUR. Mm-hmm. He would use that as like a tactic, allegedly. So that's that's this and i saw somebody say it in the comments but yeah like basically every conspiracy theory out there is rooted in anti-semitism it's like every single one yeah um, always and so it's interesting mckay and i actually back when we first started the channel we actually wanted it, to do it was an when that, video. that first uh vice art like even a little bit before that first vice article dropped about tim when um the Davis County, Davis, Utah County DA, I think it was, launched an investigation into OUR. So Vice did a really detailed piece about Tim. And like up to that point, a lot of the weird things and inconsistencies with Tim Ballard and OUR um, and trying to paint a picture as to why there was an investigation that it had to have been two years ago at this point. Yeah. And even then, I was like, this Tim Ballard guy is not good. But at mm-hmm. that point, I don't think we were, we weren't ready in there was to a, take that on. No, and that's what we were afraid of legal action, which is why we didn't do it at the time. But now that all this is coming down the pike, it would be much less likely that he would go after us, given the media circus that's going on right now. But even John did interviews. I think John did like a three part episode a few years ago where he talked about OUR and Tim. So, like, if you're in the ex-Mormon sphere, especially, you've known Tim is kind of sketchy. Yeah. And so it's well, not surprising. I, I remember specifically that a lot of people in the live chat of those episodes, they were they just couldn't believe it. Because even after leaving the church and everything, people are still under the impression. Obviously, when you're criticizing someone who claims that they are saving children from trafficking and abuse and things like that, Obviously, it looks bad on you because you're like, oh, he's doing what these people think is a good thing. And I think it's a bad thing. Yeah. So a lot of people just write it off and they're like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about or whatever, because they just think he's doing a good thing like he says he is. But you can't always take people at their word because whatever's below the surface that they keep below the surface is not what is going to get them the donations no and so apparently he's going to like it's pretty solid that tim apparently is going to run for office and i think he's, and he's supposed been, to announce on october 10th so 10 yeah, 10 he's been teasing it with this uh acronym togofo t-o-g-f-o right or t-o-g-o-f-o i think it's t-o-g-o-f-o um, i can look him up on instagram um because apparently this statement that said that he is going to run for office on good authority so that he's going to announce on October 10th and like that date was given to him by like the psychic <laughs> Nephi lady. It just sounds so fucking. <laughs> it just sounds so bad. Unhinged. Tom T-O-G-F-O. Fo. What does the T-O-G-F-O. comment say on it? It Everybody. Uh, I'm not logged sure. in. Everybody's like, what does this mean, Tim? What does this mean? So he's like trying to be cute. And it's yeah, it's just embarrassing at this point. And he looks ragged as hell. Dude. Pull up that one picture from his he, Instagram. He looks like he is. Right now. He looks like he is struggling. Hold on to me. Uh, ah. Not that. Don't need that. Like, this is what he looks like here, right? Can you click on? So he's looking normal. Normal but looking like dude. in some of these pictures, he just does not like this. Like, look at this. Tell me that does not look like a man who is struggling. Yeah, because when was this from? Oh, my God. I'm not logging in. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, here's here's Jordy Peterson with Jim Caviezel, who played him in the Sound of Freedom movie. Yeah, I from that same time, I remember... Jim Caviezel was like they were doing like some sort of reveal or something like that and he was on stage and started it might have been in that Vice article he started talking about Adrenochrome and how Tim was like telling him all about it and uh, Tim wasn't even there but then suddenly when he's talking about all this stuff they were able to like uh, 
phone him in or something. The rough to video was six days ago. Chill it out. Was this the one of him talking about the church and is he just oh, back he to made posting a... business as usual? No, he made a another statement a <clears throat> few hours ago. Yeah. Let's that um Tim has written a few books. Um and he kind of took the John McNaughton approach. Here, we can pull it up. I was going to pull it up on Deseret Book and see if they still are selling it. Because he had a, des- a book deal with Deseret Book and they were selling his No, books I just sent you the statement that he made. In the Deseret Bookstore, which is owned by the church. His statement. Thank you, Jordan. We're doing this live, guys. Like Bill O'Reilly in, in this bitch. Fuck it. We'll do it live. You better not say any unhinged shit in this. You know he's going to say unhinged shit. Ugh. All right. He looks better in this How one. How do we? Yeah, he does look better in this one. He looked like he was struggling in the other one. I was like, who texted me? Me. <laughs> it's Jordan. Go away. Special place right now in Washington, D.C. The soldier's home, the Lincoln Cottage. Abraham Lincoln lived here during the summer months and especially the summer of 1862 when he was writing the Emancipation Proclamation, which was very Why difficult. does he sound like he's going to cry? <laughs> That's what he sounds I like to me. I literally am going to cry. He lied about He was having so much pressure upon him. Don't do it. His advisors told him because the North may not accept it. He, this sounds like revisionism. Oh my God! He that if he did it, it would lead to the end of slavery. So lots of pressure and having to make a decision. I currently uh, am under fire with false allegations <gasps> from sources that we have not. Been he thinks he's fucking him. I'm sure you've seen some of this in the press, and. I want to read you the statement that the Spear Fund, an organization dedicated to rescuing children by partnering with multiple organizations around the world. We just made deals in Central America so that we can target those traffickers who are hurting children. They will soon be residents in the United States because they're trying to get them there. I testified about this at Congress last week. I called out the president for the policies that are causing this pain. And I also, at that moment, admitted that, yes, I am considering running for and determining whether I could fight the fight better there. It's not a coincidence that just within three days of that, all hell breaks loose. Did did he say that they want... Sorry, I'm trying to process this. He said that they want to be able to get these children to the United States legally? These are the people who are like... Close the fucking border and also the spear fund that he is talking about is basically his new O U R. Oh, it's like his. He had to rebrand because he. he It's his new project, and he's the senior advisor of rescue operations. Oh my god! They do the same thing, like let's end child trafficking. Oh my god! Light dispels darkness. The address. It's a five hundred one c three, and the address is in Utah. Providence, Utah. So, what was the the O U R tagline? Was God's children are not for sale? Is that that's just from the, the tagline of the movie? I think so. That's so corny, dude. That is so stupid, corny. How to join the fight? Stories matter. Yeah, they sure fucking do. Please tell true ones in the future. The Sorry, and let's false listen allegations to this. are brought upon me. False allegations. And because of that. And because of the fact that, like Lincoln... Dude, he, he sounds like a pop-punk vocalist on Twitter right now. <laughs> I'm telling that, you, the allegations like cry. <laughs> are not true, dude. <laughs> Taos, I will not stop. I will not give up. She said no she was 18. Upon me, no matter the pain to me or to my family, because of lies, I will not. And to that end, I'd like to read you this statement. Tim Ballard issues statement affirming commitment to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Salt Lake City, September 18th, 
2023. The SPARE Fund, an organization funding and collaborating with a coalition of experts, organizations, and concerned citizens from around the globe to end human trafficking in our time, is releasing a statement on behalf of senior advisor Tim Ballard. And the statement reads, Rescuing kids and fighting child trafficking is an ugly and dark business, especially when, as the result of my work for more than 20 years, we continue to expose members of powerful, well-funded child trafficking cartels. Evil pedophiles, traffickers will stop at nothing, and they have allies. allies That's crazy that he's so concerned with evil pedophiles, but he just lets the one in his church, the ones in his church, just like go completely uncommented upon. That's interesting. Also, sorry, Hellfire Fox. I do love pop punk, but it is just the truth. <laughs> in government, in the media, in big corporations, and even in public institutions. They continue to lie about me and attempt to destroy my good name, and they will never stop. I want everyone to know that I and our vast army of supporters will likewise never stop. We will keep fighting for the vulnerable all over the globe, and we know that the truth will always prevail. I am a faithful member in good standing in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Wow. I believe in Jesus Christ, wow, the Holy bro. Scriptures, and I believe in our faith with all of my heart. That, no matter what, will never change. Now, it's been alleged... Yeah, when did he throw See, this shit together? Somebody was like, if you're going to run, you should probably uh, memorize the statement. Like, he did he throw this together last week? And I don't know. know what it this says. was only two, three hours ago. But it's interesting to me that he paused on that statement to say no matter what. So that to me says, I know that this could potentially go very poorly for me. And even if the church kicks my ass mm -hmm. out, then I'm still going to stand by and be like, this is my faith no matter what. And they're persecuting me by excommunicating me from the church or like whatever they decide to yeah. do. Corny. But the church doesn't back down. Church never back down. Never what? Oh my God. <laughs> person issued a statement about me through a tabloid that is often hostile to people of faith. When? Further, my church has not publicly verified its authenticity. We are also highly... <laughs> he's, he's really clinging to that one. Bro. <laughs> ...suspicious about the timing of such a statement, given its close proximity to Mitt Romney's announcement that he is retiring. Frankie B, love you. Film it inside. This is giving Brittany Dawn giving an important statement with the fucking zippers in the dryer. <laughs> Like, if you're going to give an important <laughs> statement... Get a dead cat for your fucking microphone. Be mindful of where you're freaking filming. Yeah. Well, the inside, he probably would choose, like, some very large hall where it'd be really echoey. ...running for public office. The LDS Church does not engage in political activity. Cap. In any event, nothing will change my core beliefs. If someone within the church did release this statement... I am absolutely confident that the right people will step in and ensure that proper due process is followed as the rules of our church dictate. Damn, the copium this guy is huffing. That is okay. weapons grade right here. So I just pulled up the Deseret News, which is the church-owned news station media. The Deseret <laughs> News independently verified the legitimacy of the statement issued by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Cope and seethe, Mr. Looks like I'm taking a shit when I'm just trying and to read a statement. The thing is, the dumb thing for Tim is he's inching them closer to kind of forcing their hand in making him look like a dumbass. Like, you're saying that this isn't a verified and valid statement? Like, okay, well, let me come out and say it again. And this time I'm not going to be really nice about it. You know, like, yeah. They don't take I don't these think things you, lightly. Yeah, I don't think you want the fucking smoke, buddy. They he doesn't. This is a really he stupid move on his part smoke. because the church is not yeah. your friend, dude. No, they are they are for protecting their interests. And they have had a lot of they have had a banner year for bad PR. But that is what they're having with the top, the best fucking lawyers and the best minds that they can conjure up. And that is their damage control. Can you imagine how much fucking worse it would be if it weren't like that? 
Super chat from Katie. If you guys like this actually wanted to fight human trafficking, they'd fight fundy shit, white supremacy, and capitalism that threatens them so they won't. Yeah, real this talk. is a grift. It is not I looked anything up, real. I looked up the Spear Fund. It wasn't started by Tim. It was other people's organizations with the last oh. name Spear, but they took Tim on. Okay, because so they wanted the, yeah. He needed something else to do, apparently. Okay. Let's finish I, this out. My family and the Spear Fund team will confidently move forward and focus on our mission of saving children from the horrors of sex. The corpse of Ray Liotta. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Damn, that was so brutal. TPZ 1987. That was slavery and remaining fierce defenders of freedom. We invite anyone who shares this passion to please join us. Thank you. Could we have made it a little more succinct? Succinct. Could we have... Brief. Words that Tim does not use. Did we miss a super chat? No, I, I talked about it. The one from Kaylee? Yeah, from Katie. Oh, wait, go down. Wait, what? Just ignore my super chat. Oh, Kaylee line. Did we miss one? Oh, uh, oh sorry. I did. I was watching this. And if I'm switching, then I, I don't have Just the chat. Just say something up. again. We'll get back yeah, to it. Tim Ballard, let's go get these kids to the U.S. so we can abuse them here instead of those horrific third world countries. Yeah, it's yeah, that's what it's giving. It's like, oh, these kids are no good to us in the global south. Let's We got to make workers out of them. Yeah. So, yeah. I did see it. I, I just didn't come back to it because we were busy. Sorry. Um, so that's kind of what's going on with the Tim O.U.R. thing. I mean, honestly, it's one of those things that if we were to do coverage on it, it would need a PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah. Just because of how much you is saw how going scatterbrained on. we were right now. Um, because there's so many layers to this and there's simultaneous things going on. But I'm very interested to see how this plays out because I think it, Tim is going to learn the hard way that the church does not care about him. No. Like he's under they don't, the It doesn't care about they care. anybody. He, they do not care. They will further kick his ass out no harder than anything they've ever done. Like they do not give a shit. Yeah. They kick you off the bus. They throw you under it. They run you over and then they back over you. Right. And then they never speak of you ever again. Mm. So he thinks he has like this alliance with the church. And even if at one point they did... The church doesn't care. The church is name and brand only. And so if he is in any way a threat or a destabilizer to anything or is just causing drama and problems, they will remove him. <laughs> yeah, they don't care. It's not. The church does not complicate things in this sense. Like if it is a problem, they will just take it out. Just like everything yep. else they ever do, ever do. John's pointing out things that are wrong with the church, excommunicating him. Natasha yeah. Helfer is oh af after we use him to do the gospel gospel topics essays. right exactly then we'll boot his ass like Natasha they booted. have September 6 booted right they have no loyalties to any members and so he's gonna like die on the hill oh yeah of being a like hard and true Mormon and yeah. it's gonna be for nothing because they don't fucking care didn't they um because there were records that um, former first presidency, but now apostle Dieter or Uchtdorf had made donations to presidential campaigns of Democratic um, candidates. candidates. And did they not make a an official statement disavowing a fucking apostle? They were like, this was a personal choice of his. This does not reflect anything that the church believes or whatever. Because and then they they're set a rule or whatever. Oh, they're not supposed to make. I think they set like a. I can't remember. This was a while ago. To yeah, make donations to presidential campaigns because they're public. Yeah, I I I think that's. So even that, like even their own, like their own yeah. damn apostle. They uh, and they were he was. So I don't know. I don't know where this idea comes from. Of oh, our church doesn't make official statements like that. Like, where the fuck have you been? Or they don't den Jordan Page saying the church doesn't yeah. denounce people. Girl, where yeah, are girl. you? 
Hello? Please? What are you doing? And who are you talking about? Because we're not talking about the same fucking yeah. church, girlfriend. And it's not just that we're paying attention because we're very critical of the church. That happened when we were still Mormon. Yeah. And we were both like, whoa, go Dieter. Like, yeah, we're like, cool. Yeah. A Democratic leader. Like, what the hell? So, sounds like I'm in my Mormon era. <laughs> He's like, we're in a serious relationship. Church is like, what? Yeah, literally. They will pretend like they don't even know who he is. And oh, that's yeah. probably why you. he's so riled up is because him and Ballard probably had like a decent relationship. And now they're tossing him out like days old garbage. Like yeah. that is why these it's things all don't matter. just a working relationship. They do not care. They are a well-oiled machine and they will use it to their advantage and they will run over whoever they'll gets crush in the, the way. Crush the shit out of you. Yeah. And I feel I don't feel bad for him because I think he's a piece of shit. But it's almost like gratifying to me because I want the church to come down on his ass and be like, you want to fucking push it? We'll make another yeah. statement. and We won't be so kind this time. Or we're not going to because now they've created some divisiveness around his run for office. Yeah. So are you going to side with the he church? Really, you gonna side with him? He really fucking. He blew it. Bro. He blew it big time. I am showing off like a L'Oreal commercial <laughs> because I, I washed my hair before, right before. Um, what else? I would just had something else to add on that. God damn it. He blew it big time. He blew it. And now, like, he's still going to have some Mormon supporters who are thinking, like Jordan, who are thinking this is fake news. But, like tried and true mormons like who will go to the death for the church will eventually back away from this and stop backing him because it, yeah if i were to guess he's gonna go unhinged with the church shit yeah and people are gonna start to be like oh, okay oh like he's a lot oh uh, I, I remember what i was gonna say um just to paint a picture like in the in within mormon community and mormon circles like this is huge it's not just like utah um one of my former boss who was in my ward who operate owns and operates a chick-fil-a i don't need that air coming on right now it's already cold as shit um i remember them a couple years back holding a a fundraiser for our and just that was they were doing a fundraiser that month and that's what they chose as their beneficiary for their fundraising so this idea has been implanted because of Mormonism. Tim Ballard and OUR by extension, but ultimately Tim Ballard benefited because of his relationship with Mormonism and with high up Mormon leaders and things of that nature. And a lot of people have been like, oh, I kind of feel sympathetic. I do not. I don't fucking care what happens to Tim Ballard because this is a guy who benefited from Mormon power structures and connections to high up Mormon leaders. And now the leopards are eating his face and he can't even come to grips with the fact that this is happening. Like he's so lost in the sauce that he's like, this couldn't happen to me. Like after all I all the stuff that I did and everything, I don't feel bad for him because he's just on the same level as these other guys. He he benefits from it. He's used it to separate good meaning people from their capital, just like the Mormon church does. And now he's getting fucking burned. So I don't care. Yeah, I mean the leopard ate my face yeah. moment and i think <laughs> icarus flew too f close to the sun <laughs> it's it's just too much so we'll end on this note hannah one of our mods sent me a lovely video oh man of oh we Trump have a piece of news course. too guys what? guys we have a piece of news oh we do have a piece of news let's watch this first okay. i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure everybody just in case people were about to click off like oh they're they're ending whatever no, if you do, I don't blame you, but you're going to be rewarded. Um, oh, you sent it to me. Julia, are you huh? still in here? Julia. It's the golf one. Our regulars on stream will be very, very 
happy to see this. Oh, shit. Let me get you guys seeing what I'm seeing. Oh, what did I just do? Did they release Ruby's Ruby. search warrant or just Jody's? Or was it both? All right, we're watching this. Okay, so this is Trump, right? We're golfing. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, I got that on video. <laughs> okay. I'm horrible at golf and even I know that's not supposed to happen. I I do that at Top Golf. Um just to paint a picture. I don't fucking golf. I know that's not supposed to do th for all the golfing and the golf courses that this man owns. <laughs> yeah embarrassing i wonder how much he has to pay people to shut the fuck up about his golf game <laughs> oh well that's all we had good night everybody just kidding <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll let jordan break the news this one's for our regular live viewers our regular live stream viewers of the past however many months we've been watching this yeah. That'll let Jordan. Oh take my god, it away. Julia's not in here for this news. No. Julia. Julia will probably watch it later, so. I'm going to be mad at you, Julia. Okay, well, not George Bush being better. Julia, watch I this. <laughs> Now watch this try. <laughs> I did this and I wanted to wait for you, but I don't know where you are. Um Okay, so if you know, if you're a regular viewer more recently, we watched Provo's Most Eligible, which is the Mormon version of The Bachelor, the Bachelor. for BYU students, basically. Um, very cringe, but also hilarious. And we watched both seasons, and it was so freaking funny. Um, and we loved it. So I reached out to Dan, as promised. Otherwise known as Dan Ban Bam on tiktok and instagram and after many of you actually had sent me messages where you reached out to dan yourselves which was funny to me and dan and i chatted and he agreed that doing an interview would be amazing so basically what we're doing right now is just nailing down a time yes he's uh yeah the last thing i said to him was would you be comfortable doing it live on stream and he said that would be great i haven't responded to him on a date or a time so i did oh you did okay yes so we'll work out when is good for him so i am not sure on a time yet officially but we'll work it out so just know that Dan has agreed to come on and what I will do is once we have nailed down a time, we'll let you guys know, but I will do a post on YouTube and then a question box on Instagram and I'll have you guys come up with things that you want Bethany? us to ask. Like Bethany? Bethany. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll put it in a packet and we'll sell it to you. Yeah. So that way you can, cause like obviously we'll, we have plenty of things to say and talk with him about, but I want you guys to like have a chance to get your questions and things answered. Um, so know that that is, that is coming. Um, and I will keep you posted as soon as we know when that's going to happen. I will let you know. It's on the calendar. I don't have a date, but it's there. It's there. Is that what you said? It's there. <laughs> it is I on a calendar, whether that calendar is the one that we're using or it is uh, in some other dimension. I cannot tell you, but it is on a calendar somewhere sometime. But it's happening. So I'm happy that we've been able to deliver on one of the things that you guys wanted so badly. Um, and so we'll put out an Instagram post where you can ask the questions and a YouTube post where you can ask the questions. And then um, we'll go through them. If he wants me to, I'll send them to him beforehand. And... Um, that way we can get some of your questions answered. 
Tay, you're going to have to watch the uh, Provo's Most Eligible episodes we did. It's basically like the last pro probably 20 <laughs> of the live streams that we did uh, before the whole Jody and Ruby thing But happened. Dan is our favorite cast member yes. from The Bachelor, and he actually yes. came out after being on The Bachelor and was like the best one of the best parts of the show because he's yeah. just authentic and you, no bullshit and you may know him from viral videos of him going on to the byu campus and asking uh students if they would rather watch a few minutes of a porn video or drink a cup of cooking oil and an alarming amount of people said they would rather drink a cup of cooking oil yes. so that was lovely excellent. Lovely. But that, yeah, that's Dan. He's awesome. And he's from Zimbabwe. Yeah. And he's hilarious. So we're looking forward to having him on and we'll keep you updated on when that will be and the question box. And then as far as content, we need to do another video. Um, we'll put together what that will look like. Maybe we do need to do a video about who you are. We might need to. I think we, it depends. Maybe we'll do an update video on. There hasn't been much going so on far. with Jody and Ruby. Well, this the search week. warrants came out. Yeah, today. the search warrants. They were supposed to have their hearing on Monday, uh, but it was rescheduled because of the copious amounts of discovery that needed sifting through still. So. Which my lawyer friend feeling... told me that's usually a bad sign for the defense is when everybody that has is... to sit down and pour through all this shit. Yeah. And that was confirmed today with the search warrant. We won't go into it, but there was a lot of data that was authorized from that search warrant. Okay, yeah. Of Jody and Ruby communication. So they're going to have a lot to yeah. look through. Are they able to push their current scheduled appointment back again? I Is would there imagine. a hard I'm I'm going to yeah, I would imagine it's going to be delayed a couple more times. Um Oh, we could do a Jen and James collab about OER. Well, I James totally forgot that James did a video about it. And <laughs> James, he was also talking about doing, he wants to do a video on Mitt Romney. And now he's and retiring. Glenn Beck so bad. Well, he, he still should do a video about Mitt Well, that's Romney. what I'm saying is it would be like a nice culmination since he's ending his political career. Yeah. And Glenn Beck, I was like, dude, you need to go to Glenn Beck so bad. My dad missed my first fucking parade as a high schooler because of glenn beck and that stupid 912 movement fuck glenn beck i'm gonna drop the video from funny fridays about um sound of freedom in the chat about the movie that we've been talking about james did coverage on it yes because he went and saw it um so that's in the chat if you'd like to watch it and then as usual our other lawyer friend natalie lawyer chick who we did a live stream with more recently um she, I'm assuming, will also maybe look at the search warrants. I haven't looked at her page um, in the last few days, but I will have to look at that. Um, and yeah, so be mindful of what you watch. Be mindful of who you watch. Be mindful of people who cannot get their shit straight. And that's all I'll say about that. Mitt Romney's 76. I knew he was getting up there, but that dude's holy old. Fuck. Old for Mo uh, most of my <laughs> relatives don't make it to 76. So that's old in my book. I only have one grandma <laughs> left. I Everybody have, else has been gone for 10 years at least. I have none. Wait, let me send this in the chat also i'll link dan's tiktok in here our mod hannah and sage got me these links goaded very helpful. shout out to our mods our mods are the best i can't ever remember their names in sage is sage and then we got hannah who's also hannah <laughs> got miku's headphones and then Miku's headphones song of solace song of solace logged out a bit ago but she was here earlier Bernie is 82. Yeah. Old. I was going to say, isn't there like an 89-year-old? I'm older. Old? I'm 28. Jordan's 26. Hi, I'm Mod. There's Hannah. Everybody say, hi, Hannah. Hannah's chill and cool. Why do Mormons die young? 
I don't know. This is just, it runs in my family. There's a lot of old as fuck Mormons. The president of the church, I think it's 99, Rusty Nelson. And they're like, oh, Sleepy Joe. Rusty Nelson's 99 fucking years old. Like, uh, most of the church leadership either fought, uh, was draft age in World War II or draft age in Vietnam. <laughs> so... Yeah, I wouldn't be throwing stones at old people in Congress because your church is a bunch of old fucking geezers too. Chill out. Haven't had a grandparent for almost 50 years, Tim. Damn, dude. I want to shout out Tim too because Tim is also one of those fucking... Always. I, anytime we're on YouTube or we're watching a live stream or something, Tim is there. It's true. <laughs> Tim. Every time. Yeah. Tim is very active. So we appreciate Tim. Always participating too. Yeah. Shout out to the lurkers. I know not everybody wants to participate in the chat. Obviously not all 600 of you that were here today were participating in the chat, but we appreciate everybody. So thank you. We will have another video. I'm trying to figure out what we're going to do. I don't think... There's not enough information, I feel like, for another A Passengers update right now. Yeah, um, we'll see. So I'll wait a little longer on that. If you're not aware, we do have a Discord and we have an 8 Passengers channel where you can talk about all things 8 Passengers. And there's people in there pretty regularly. So if you need a space to talk about it that's not the subreddit, feel free to join our Discord. The link is in the description. Um, and it is moderated by our lovely moderators. And we will work on what our next video is going to be. I'm thinking it might need to be about OUR. There's also some wild ass family vlogger shit going on. I've gotten, I've been thinking about doing a funny video because I got sucked in on Instagram to like LDS videos, like unironically. Like there are these people that like somehow I started getting weird ads not ads, but like weird Mormon oriented videos. Like I got one the other day that was like garment friendly outfits. And I was like, Oh, oh God, my God, no. And it was oh, one of those the, mi sisters, the missionary but... influencer too. Yes. Yes. In yes, Brazil. Yes. yes. That was the Bra like Brazil that MTC. other Mormon family blogger. Yeah. Yes. The Mike Cell girl. Yes. So I got sucked down a whole thing. And so now because I clicked on it and watched all these things, I'm getting suggested all this weird Mormon, like Gen Z and millennial content. Um, and so I was thinking about maybe making a compilation and watching a bunch of them. So just as like a nice light hearted break advertising from all the things the that we've been doing <laughs> lately. So maybe we'll start with that and then I'll start like slowly piecing together the OUR PowerPoint. Yup. How's that? I think, I think that sounds good. Okay. That would be fun. Anyway. I know we've said goodbye. We appreciate everybody. We'll let y'all get to bed. I know it's late for a lot of people. Um, we love you. We'll see you all soon. And good night. Oh, wrong one. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> Here we go.